Don't tell me what to do, sister. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You love you know being me? told what to do. Oh, I just love you. You know that for 25 years. I just love being told what to do. Love here's it. how you should do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, that's a good idea. Why don't you just, here's how you do it. Open the door, go out it, and then close it. There, that's that's how you do it. Get away from me. And then right? Tom locks it. And then I lock the door. Who Remember um, Sly and the Family Stone? You guys know that group, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sylvester Stewart. Did you ever hear what, you know, he was a disc jockey in San Francisco when he was in the band. I mean, before the band broke big, but he was a disc jockey. And he decided because his band was doing so well, he was going to quit his radio job in San Francisco. So he barricaded the door to Studio A and went on and on and on about how he's banging the general manager's daughter. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, okay wow. there, Sylvester. It's a little harsh, don't you think? Damn. That's <laughs> incredible. I cannot relate to that story in any capacity. No. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hell of a way to go out on your last day. Well, well Sylvester did make like make it big splashes. I love that band. Sly and the Family Stones it was one of my favorite bands when I was a kid, actually. Yeah, it's great. Really, really good band. Um, so if we're gonna do any news at all before Phil comes on in about nine minutes, uh, it's negative, 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 and negative. So there, we're covered. We just did all the news. Everything sucks, everything's horrible, and we all hate one another. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And it's no um, was that? I said, and it snowed this morning. That about rum, uh, sums up uh, yep. Minnesota news. That's just the but, sprinkles on yeah. top, literally. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to heat up again uh, later in the week. Yeah, it'll get up to yeah. like mid-40s, which is nice. But I was not looking forward to a high of 29 today. I wanted yeah. to no, ease into the week. Especially when, because you hear everybody's been talking about how it's going to be warm. And I opened my phone, and the first thing I saw was Chris Eggert's, like, picture of oh it's going to be above average for weather and so i'm leaving the house thinking yeah well, it's gonna be nice garage door opens and just snow everywhere i was like damn you chris eggert damn you eggert well you can you can go after him in about what like 20 minutes yeah, that'll be good well he likes coming on at 8 30 so i guess it'd be about 28 minutes but in any case yeah so just the headlines for today basically uh, everybody hates everybody else. Um, it's okay to sneak into the country and then murder a 16 year old. Apparently. I, I, let me ask you a question about that. Mm -hmm. Of the millions of people that have snuck into this country, I don't know how many murders have been committed, but there've been a lot, but this guy scumbag dirtbag piece of shit that he is comes into the country. And the first thing he does is kill a 16 year old girl. Um, Washington DC. Isn't that enough? Is that enough now that one little girl lost her life because you let every asshole through the door? Right? Yeah, it's a, that's a terrible story. It's just horrible, and it's happening again and again and again. When are we going to protect our citizens? 16-year-old girl, he stabbed her to death from what I understand. Ugh. So when's enough enough? I know you want them to come through so they'll vote for you. I know why you're doing it. This is, again, all about money again. Because they'll get them all the vote. And by the way, if you don't have a job, you have no income, why do you get to vote anyway? Right? If you've got nothing nothing in the game, why do you get to vote? I get, yeah, this might be a dumb question, but if somebody crosses the border illegally, they're voting? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah that, that, that was what I took away. I I I barely know how to vote for myself. As <laughs> right. So right. I guess yeah. I was not aware that just you know just being here qualifies. Yeah, I would assume that somebody you know running from something in Mexico or trying to you know sneak across the border maybe right. doesn't speak a lot of English. I'd be shocked that they're able to vote. Yeah. Well, my mind. I mean, you do know that the, the Somali immigrants in in this country when they came here, they were picked on on buses, be driven to vote did you know that no the, even i guess even if they didn't have because like you have to show your id and all that like even if you don't they just really oh, so. look i'm not i'm not criticizing the immigrants here they're getting away with with a lot of stuff there's no doubt about it. i i got nothing against anybody in mexico or somalia or, i i got a life i don't need to be pissed off at everybody mm -hmm. else i just think shouldn't we have one set of rules and everybody has to follow those rules what's wrong with that idea yeah which that's i guess that was the point of my question was yeah i was unaware that they it was so easy for 
whoever, if you want, if I was a politician to be like, you know what, let's just, you know, bust a bunch of people that aren't supposed to be voting and we're going to go over here to this right. special place. Like, yeah, that's wild to me. And then you got the three anti-Semitic presidents of universities at Harvard, uh, Penn, and what was the other one? I can't remember the other one. I don't know, whatever it is. But uh, now, did you see they're going after him? And, and the woman at UPenn got fired, right? Except yep. she didn't get fired. They transferred her to another department, and she still makes as much money as she was making. It cost her nothing other than the title of president of the university. That's all it cost her for going after Jews on national television. Yeah, because essentially they're all using the guise of freedom of speech, correct? Yeah. For why this is okay. And it's like, you know, I get it, freedom of speech, but maybe we should draw the line at, you know, like encouraging genocide. Maybe that would be a good yeah. line to draw the sand. Absolutely. I, I, again, I, I'm not even upset about this kind of stuff, and I'm not singling out anybody or whatever, but it would be kind of nice if you go to work every day and bust your ass and pay your taxes that you should be able to vote. And if you don't, you should not be able to vote. I'm sorry. If you're not kicking in, why do you get to vote? Right? Yeah. I think that's fair. That's a pretty valid point. I think it's, but that's not how we are. That's, we just, as long as I benefit from you being here, then you can be here. That's what this is all about. Right. Right. I really wish it weren't that way, but you, you I will, I will want to show you one thing. I've, I've talked about three things so far. I haven't brought up the Kansas city game for a very specific reason. And I certainly haven't brought up the, that magnificent performance by both teams in uh, last night's Viking game. We'll get to. Uh... <laughs> Too soon, Tom. Whoa, whoa, well, but whoa. Phil's coming on in like one minute. Uh, I had to get in the precursor there. Uh, <laughs> I, I got to be honest, I did not watch the game again. Tom, that team sucks. You did yourself a huge favor. Really I, bad, I bet. About halftime, I said, I really <laughs> should turn this off. And I was like, you know what? I, I got to see it through. And at the end, it felt like watching us get blown out. It felt like yeah, yep. it was the most disappointed I've ever been in this team since we lost to Philadelphia in the playoffs after the right. miracle when we got blown out by like 40 points. It felt just like that. It was so disgusting. I, I'm done. I hate. I, I got no argument with you. I didn't even watch the game. I did see that. I kept checking the score, though, you know, because I'm not watching the game, but I need to know what's going on. So I kept checking the score. Zero, 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 zero. Your ass like, broken. What? <laughs> right. like, Ka Catherine, my phone's not updating. Did you do? <laughs> did we pay the bill? <laughs> what is my phone not updating? Yeah. <laughs> They're saying it's the fourth quarter and it's still nothing, nothing. What? I see eight punts in the yeah. first half. What is that? No, there's no way. It was so bad. So, like, normally announcers, yeah. it's their job to keep everybody engaged. Like, hey, even though this is a bad game, like, ah, we're having fun. They're like, well, we haven't seen anything like this since 1961 or the inception of football. This is the worst game. And they're, like, essentially begging one of the people. <laughs> That's players. hilarious. I kind of want to go back and listen to the commentary. Uh, it was oh. so bad. I don't even blame them though, because like you go out there, this you're, this is your pinnacle of your career. Essentially, you are calling yes. NFL games on an NFL slate, yeah, and you get out there and is the it's the second three point like total accumulation sum yep. in the past twenty years. The only other one happening in 07 in a game that was essentially a downpour in Pittsburgh. Nobody yep. can hold on to the ball. It's the third one of these games in the past 40 years that's been a 3-0 final. It's it, like it was an all-around like record-setting day for just poor performance. Yes. Everybody mm -hmm. did not ch nobody checked a box. You can't walk out uh, out of there with like a no. one like it's a one-star review there's, of the game yeah. and that's only cuz I have to give it a There's star. there's no moral moral like goodness that came out of this. At one point <laughs> at halftime so they show like here's the highlights from the first half and the announcers <laughs> oh. go the oh. announcers go well, I don't know what we're going to show you, but here's the highlights. There was a missed field goal, and then they're like, what else should we show them? And they're like, ah, there's a couple sacks, I think. I don't know. Yeah, we could probably put those. They show a missed field goal, and then they keep it pushing to the next game. And they show, um, like, they cut in so they'll have live game breaks. And there was, you know, one game was, it was like 21 to 14. Yeah. And they're like, well, that's uh, 35 more points than we've got scored in this game. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. They, like, show a highlight of, like, the crowd giving like a the perfect high five from somebody else or like, yeah, the perfect wave. The, the crowd really stepped up on the wave this year. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was bad. I don't know what to tell you. That's all I have. I think to tie it in with the beginning of the show, because Phil's coming on a couple of seconds here. I think that if you lose that badly or even win that badly, because the Vikings did win the game three to nothing, but that's a very bad win. Wouldn't you say? Yeah. I, I texted my group of friends and was like, it's a shame that we have to win this game. Like if we yeah. could just opt out and be like, Hey, we'll just take the loss. That, that would have <laughs> felt better than coming away with a victory. Well, maybe they should not be allowed to vote either. Sorry. You, your performance was so bad. You can't vote. <laughs> How for like funny. Three points. And you can How vote. funny. Yes. Like, it's like, that's the consequence for bad sports playing. Like, you don't get to vote. You also don't get to drive. All, like, random things. You don't get to own a cat ever. Like, Oh, no cats? No That'd cats. be tough. That'd be, That'd be a tough, tough road to hoe right there. That's all I have to say. But, yeah, it. Uh, I, I didn't uh, – well, good. The timing is perfect here because Phil just popped on. So we were just talking about the fact that I did not watch the game again last night because the Vikings suck and I, I cannot watch them. And they proved to me last night by winning three to nothing, how badly they really do suck. They're terrible. Well, that's one way. That's one way to frame it, Tom. You could also frame it as an historically great defensive performance by the Vikings. <laughs> right. a, sh a shout out, a, a shutout on the road against one of the longtime heritage franchises sure. in the NFL, the Raiders. Yeah. Yep. yep. You're right. It is a wonderful win, three to nothing. <laughs> I was just telling him, Phil, honest to God, I kept checking my phone going, Honey, is my phone not working? I mean, these guys pointed out my phone. It's still nothing to nothing in the third quarter. That, that can't be right. What's wrong with my delete, phone? Delete this app. What's happened? The funniest part was, <laughs> you know how on Fox, like you're watching a game and they'll do like the game breaks. They'll go, let's go back to the studio in Los Angeles or the studio in New York where Carissa Thompson has an update on another game. And they show us like, oh, here's the San Francisco 49ers scoring a touchdown. They lead the Seattle Seahawks seven to nothing back to you guys. And uh, Mark Sanchez was on the broadcast for oh, that sure. putrid Vikings Bears game. And so Carissa does the update 49ers score a touchdown over the Seahawks. Back to you guys. And, and it's like, you know, end of the third quarter, early fourth quarter, and no one scored. And Mark Sanchez goes, Hey, Carissa, are you breaking into other games and giving them updates on our game or, <laughs> or no? And then, of course, they had cut her mic off. And Sanchez is like, Carissa? Are you there? Is anyone <laughs> watching this game? <laughs> I mean, it's just such a Viking thing that I grew up loving the Vikings. I okay, I got to change the subject for one second because if I were a member of the Kansas City Chiefs, I, I think it was a wide receiver that was, yep. was lined up over the. It, he was at least six inches over the line. How did he not know that? Okay, so it's funny. I'm glad that you're taking this stance because I feel like the outrage today is how could you call that penalty? Well, wait a second. If you're if you're the wide receiver, and since high school you can look over to the sideline and at, you can yep. literally ask the official with a thumbs up, thumbs down. Am I good? Yep. Mm -hmm. That guy's also dropped about 75 passes this season. So <laughs> Kadarius Tony goodbye might want to pull his head out of his uh, his keister here at some point. Yeah. They won the game, but because he was sick, hit, about half his foot was over the line. They yeah. called it back. The no touchdown, no last second win for for Kansas City. God, that must have pissed the fans off. Man, what? one of the well, well, the fans are just mad at the officials because you know. No, and I guess uh, right uh, okay, job. if the Those official quarterback, <laughs> right? Well, he, the yeah. the official threw the flag obviously like right away. He didn't know yes. that Travis Kelsey was. I think if if the official had known that it was going to be literally one of the greatest plays in like modern NFL history, he probably just he probably lets it slide, but he couldn't have known that. So and, no. and I get the frustration from Kansas City, like it's a sure. terrible way to lose a game. And typically yeah. with those, you'll see the ref, you know, all right, instead of throwing the flag, we're going to come up. Hey, just so you know, you're getting a little close to the line. I'll let it slide this once. And so I think that's right. what they were kind of frustrated with is the really you call it the first time. Who knows if he was lined up like that more. But, uh, yeah, they were – Patrick Mahomes was not happy. After well, that, the that's the thing is he's acting like this is the worst call in NFL history. And, but, buddy, do you know how many times that you've gone on the opposite end of some of those, like, missed calls or calls being, like, given your way? And then mm -hmm. we, we've seen the replacement refs in the NFL. We, we we've seen that's right like just a coin toss in the end zone between the Seahawks and the Packers. There have been much worse calls 
it's one week. You'll, my, my, you'll my favorite blown call in NFL history is from it's from the 90s. Uh, do you guys remember Jerome Bettis, the, the big sure. Notre Bucks. Dame running back, the boss, right? The Steelers Steelers and they're going to overtime. And I think it was Jerome Bettis and Jerome Bettis says, you know, heads or tails very clearly. And the official hears the other <laughs> <laughs> tails and the and the, the, the coin lands tails. He goes, uh, the Steelers call heads, and they wind up losing the game in overtime. God. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes the officials are buffoons, but dude, light, just look over. There's a line, you know. There's a there's a line there. Sort of imagine, you know, imaginary. You can stand behind it, and it'll be great. And the cameras had a perfect angle of it too. The cameras showed very clearly yeah. that he was offsides. There's no doubt about it. Yep. Exactly. So, well, so, the, so the Chiefs are down today. Uh, the Dynasty Chiefs and the Vikings are firmly in playoff position here <laughs> with one of the best defenses in the NFL. So I don't know. Yes. You guys are, you guys can choose to look at the glass half full or half empty. I'm looking at an elite NFL defense here today. Yeah. I, the, is there any question? They shut out uh, Las Vegas. I mean, what more do you need? Well, I mean, yeah. I was unaware that John Madden was on the Raiders sidelines. Yeah, oh, it's a it's a legacy that's, franchise, uh, Tevin. It's a legacy be, franchise. Be proud of. We had to bench our quarterback in the fourth quarter. Like, By are, the way, I don't know why they I mean Josh Dobbs, we're we're always going to have that one game against Atlanta where he ran around and the yep. astronaut game. He's been so bad the last 3 games and I don't know oh. how they don't turn to a di not like they have a bunch of Joe Montanas in waiting here but uh, the fact that they they stuck with him after halftime was like, what are we, yeah. what are we yeah. doing here, guys? Do we look extra bad because we made a big deal out of, you know, oh, we're really going to evaluate who should be starting and then coming out of a bye week, which typically when you come out of a bye, you're supposed to have everything should be running like a fine-tuned machine, and then we lay this huge egg on offense. Is that kind of a knock against Kevin O'Connell? I mean, it's so hard to tell because if you were to give most coaches – this level of quarterback play in the NFL. I don't care if you're Sean McVay. I mean, look at when Matthew Stafford went out last year the Ram and, the, and a couple injuries. The Rams offense looked like a train wreck a year after they won the Super Bowl. Yeah. So it's so hard to judge an offensive coach when you have incompetent quarterback play. But it is bad when you have two weeks to prepare and you're like, the, the one thing, Kevin, so apparently Kevin O'Connell told the broadcast team yesterday because they were saying, hey, you know, what, what went into the decision to stick with Josh Dobbs after – one of the worst games you've ever seen against the Bears on Monday Night Football. Like, why <laughs> Why did you sit two weeks and then decide, yeah, we're going to go back to this guy? Yeah, yep. And, and Kevin O'Connell apparently told the broadcast crew, it's at this point in Josh Dobbs' career, at every stop, like all five, six teams he's been with, that that team bails on him, right? They see him for like a few games or a month and a half, and they cut bait on him. And he said, you know, as a, as a guy that didn't really get – you know, a lot of opportunities when I was a quarterback, I didn't want to be one of those teams that bailed early on him. It's like, all right, well, you saw one more game. I think it's safe to bail at this point. Right. Yeah. So we're essentially your girlfriend that thinks we can fix him. Yeah, exactly. It, is, okay, is, need... Oh, go ahead, Tom. No, you're up. That's fine. I was just going to say, do you think um, just that decision to leave him in also influences the injury that got Justin Jefferson brought to a hospital? Because when you have a poor – quarterback uh like we, we yeah. have a quarterback who just isn't able to put the ball in the right spot it yeah. leaves up wide receivers in very harmful areas at some point so was that kind of just a you know any quarterback situational it's going to happen or if you have no it was it was a it was a hospital ball they call yeah. it i yeah. mean they literally have a word for quarterbacks that that hang a receiver out to dry oh, now in true. the 70s when you had guys like again, legacy franchise, Jack Tatum running around, literally like head hunting. It's a, it's a lot harder now to, to get a receiver hurt over the middle, but they, they literally have a term for what happened yesterday. It's called a hospital ball. And Justin Jefferson wound up in an actual hospital because of a ball that yep. Josh Dobbs threw. So is he going to mm -hmm. be all right? He did fly back home with the team. So okay. they're calling, but they're calling it internal an internal chest injury, which Ooh. The internal thing is kind of like, oh, so it's like, okay. Yeah, is so it lungs? Like, is it? Oh. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, now I've, I've held off on this question because I didn't watch the game. Please tell me the field goal wasn't just a chip shot. Uh, the, uh, it was 36 yards. Yeah, it was a chip so shot. It was a semi-chip shot. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like a 62-yard bomb to win the game. No, it was. Exactly. 
No, Hold he on. missed the he Hold missed on. the forty nine yarder earlier that would have put oh. him up three nothing. Oh god! And then they lined up. They were up three nothing. There was like twenty seconds left, and they lined up for another field goal. But instead, they did a pooch punt. He just sure. the the kicker punt. That was the most exciting play of the game. Actually, it's the, <laughs> the the kicker. They do like a fake field goal pooch punt to to drain ten seconds off the clock. Well. Mm. All right, I know you only got one more minute, but Tevin, we got to go with some hockey or basketball here, don't we, AJ and Tevin? <laughs> no. Uh, how did they do over the weekend? <laughs> well, the Wolves, the Wolves. So the Wolves beat Memphis. Uh, was, it might have been Friday night, whatever, it was Saturday night. They beat Memphis. Uh, so now the Wolves have a 16-game stretch against playoff teams. So nobody panic if they lose some games here, okay? They're probably not going to set the NBA record for wins like they're almost on pace for. So let's, let's exercise. I know, Tom, I know you lose a lot of sleep over the Timberwolves. No so doubt about uh, it. <laughs> let's just take a deep breath if they lose a couple games against good teams here. It's still uh, it's still one of the best seasons in franchise history. I understand that to be uh, the truth. How about the hockey club? How'd they do? Yeah, we're, we need to fire another coach, don't we, I think, just to spark things. <laughs> no, he, he, he prolonged his tenure. They they picked up a win last night, a big 2-0 okay. shutout. Oh, there you go. There it is. Okay, big shutout last night. Mm -hmm. And you're wearing your gopher shirt today, so they must have done something over the weekend. Uh, no, I just uh, have a stack of laundry out here, and it was <laughs> the okay. first thing on the clean pile for me today. I'm so. glad to hear that. So you guys get the same feeling that I do about this Viking team is the coach seems to know what he's doing though. Am I getting the wrong impression here? I, I would say this. All right. I don't know that they're going to actually have this conversation, but Kevin, o Kevin O'Connell has been a good, he's a young head coach second yeah. year and he's, he's like yep. 20 and 10. So he's nowhere near a hot seat and they're going to make the playoffs probably. Right. But the defensive coordinator, Brian Flores, who also has head coaching experience, right. right. Is doing, I mean, it, he's painting a Mona Lisa with rookies and second year guys and, they like the, the Vikings wake up this morning. They last year they had one of the worst defenses in the NFL by almost any measurement. It's a top five defense mm -hmm. after after the first fourteen weeks of the season. So uh, he their their defensive coordinator Flores is, is almost certainly going to get a head coaching job, if not this cycle, the next cycle in a year right. from now. So they're going right. to have to. I would make him. I would say I don't know. Open up your books. Make him the highest paid assistant coach in the NFL. Yeah, pay him whatever. I think it'd be like five million dollars a year, and uh, and keep him around, whatever you have to do. I just want to ask God one question, and I can't even remember the guy's name. God, why wasn't I the pitcher that signed a quarter billion dollar yeah. deal and then got hurt two oh. two games later? Can't oh. play again ever. I thought you were going to say, why aren't you Shohei Otani, who just signed a seven hundred million dollar contract? Seven hundred million dollars. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> And they're de so you guys remember Bobby Bonilla from like 30 sure. years ago signed a sure. deferred contract with the Mets. So to this day, oh. Bobby Bonilla has been out of baseball for like 25 years. But to this day, it's I think it's a date in like June. Yeah, we always celebrate Bobby Bonilla Day. This is the day that he gets his million dollar deferred annual payment <laughs> from the Mets contract. <laughs> so apparently there's there's speculation that Shohei Otani deferred like 40 years of that contract. So Ooh. it's it's 700 million dollars, but it's but it's going to be over the course of like four decades part of that contract he's going to get paid what is he now 26 so he's going to be getting paid when he's like 70 years old still yeah. by <laughs> by the dodgers yeah. that's that's a bit of news right there ladies and gentlemen seven seven hundred million dollars it's incredible how do you make that money back with just one player marketing it has to be right i mean it's a lot, a lot i mean they los angeles i mean hideo nomo in the 90s there's a ton of japanese baseball fans mm -hmm. that that follow mm -hmm. Los Angeles baseball. So they must think, okay, he, when he's healthy, and by the way, he's coming off Tommy John surgery, I think for the second time, he's going to keep trying to pitch. He's one of the best pitchers, one of the best hitters, and then one of the most marketable players. So they're, they're trying to add those three bins up and say, okay, <laughs> what's the value of this? Apparently three quarters of a billion dollars is the value. <laughs> Not bad. No. All right, That's my man. value on this show, I feel like. I feel three, like, seven hundred you know, million. Checks in the you mail. Know, I'm yeah. one of the best. One of the best Vikings talking heads. You know, one of the best horror movie guys. Okay, I feel go. like I need to renegotiate a few things around here. A lot of deferred years. <laughs> yeah. Defer, yeah, defer the payments. <laughs> I did not know you were a horror movie fan because I thought I was the only one still alive. Yeah, well, it's you, me, and uh, 
I think it was AJ. AJ, you're a horror movie guy on the show, aren't you? I dabble. I wouldn't say it's like my go to, like, but I dabble for sure. Okay. okay I, mean, I, 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 I do have a spreadsheet of horror movies that I've, I've yeah, I'm referenced not before. Level. Do you have a favorite of all time, though, horror movie? Um, I think we, we talked about this, I feel like, on Halloween briefly on the show. Um, I love the paranormal stuff. So mm-hmm. I love. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love the Exorcist stuff. I love the, you know, the Omen. I love Paranormal Activity. Anything that Catholic? just sends a little chill through you. Did you grow up Catholic? Oh yeah. Oh me too. <laughs> it's always Catholics that love it horror is. films, it's and it's always true. Catholics that love the the ones that involve like the demon and the devil. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bunch yeah. of God fearing. <laughs> Okay, I'll close with this one, Phil, because you'll like this. I grew up Catholic, right? So my wife wants me to go. This is many years ago. I said, my friend's getting married. And I said, oh, yeah, okay. Well, do you want to go? I said, yeah, I'll go with you. No problem. Where is it? And she said, it's some blah, 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 n- not a Catholic church, right? So I'm joking around. I get there, and I walk in the vestibule, and there is a picture that's about 15 feet wide and 20 feet tall of Jesus, it's this gigantic picture of Jesus yeah. in the vestibule, right? And I look up, and the thing is crowded because everybody's going in for the wedding. Not one person laughed, and I got the dirtiest looks. Because I looked up at the picture and went, oh, who's this now? They it's a giant, giant think, Jesus. Yeah. They did not think that was funny at all. I no. will tell you. There is no laughing inside a Catholic church or a Catholic setting of any kind. But this was, a, I think, like a Baptist or something. Okay. The Baptists, they, they did not like me. I said, no. I, who's this now? I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, God. Well, no, all right. You got to be very go serious. Like all right. I got to go. I got to go. It's mostly a therapy session on Purple Daily. People are very upset about the offense. So I'll no, talk to you guys. It's hard to believe. <laughs> all right, right Pally. We'll talk Thank to you guys on Friday. Friday. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Phil Mackey, Score North, ladies and gentlemen. Judd will be on with us tomorrow. And, of course, Phil returns on Fridays. We'll take a break here. Be right back. What's that Lamo's name again? Oh, yeah, Chris Eggert. That's right. I enjoyed that immensely. Well, if somebody said to you, like, you look up and there's a picture of Jesus, and they said, who's this now? Wouldn't you? You'd think that was funny, wouldn't you? I would think it was funny, yeah. Because either way, if they A didn't Ah. know or B, it was a joke. Either way, I would find it very funny. I mean, come on. All right. You should be able to make jokes. Like yelling, like, who wants a shot when you do communion because it's in the little cups? Like, yeah. stuff yeah, like exactly. <laughs> Popping bottles. <laughs> That's exactly what we're talking about here. There's no question about it. All right, we got to take a break. Be right back with Chris uh, Eger joining us from Channel 5 Eyewitness News. You have all helped support my pillow and their employees in these tough economic times. Michael Lindell knows this, continues to give back to listeners with great deals on his most popular products. Right now, you can save 50% on Queen and King pillows, the original My Slippers, and the My Pillow six pack bath towel sets well they're back in stock the proprietary technology makes them extremely absorbent yet still provides that soft feel you look for in a towel the set comes with two bath towels two hand towels and two washcloths regular price is 79.98 for a limited time you can get this six-pack towel set for only 39.99 with promo code tom that is a 50 percent savings so go to mypillow.com use promo code tom to save 50 percent on the my pillow six pack towel sets that is just 39.99 for a set this deal will not last long enter promo code tom for this special and more hello i'm brad huckle president and chief lending officer at north american banking company and i'm michael bilsky ceo at north american banking company as a locally owned and operated community bank we work with many multi-generational businesses take personal care dentistry of roseville for example Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You know, you guys can talk just in case I don't get back in time. (laughs) 
KNL Surplus and Ammo is your one-stop shop for all firearms-related products. It is a preferred choice among trap enthusiasts and waterfowl hunters for over 25 years. KNL is an authorized SKB shotgun dealer with a huge selection of youth models and has a huge selection of trap loads. Fall hunting is here. Head to KNL Surplus and stock up on waterfowl loads. KNL now has a lot of the calibers that have been hard to find in stock. KNL Surplus and Ammo is veteran owned and offers first responder and veteran discounts. Check this out. Mention this show and receive a 10% off anything in the store. Anything in the store. KNL is also committed to safety and a licensed FFL retailer. Find out for yourself why KNL Surplus and Ammo has been the choice of gun owners for over 25 years. Go to www.klgunstore.com. How many seconds did you guys let that go? It's only like- oh, I, don't even, I think it was about three and a half seconds. I was keeping track. Yeah, because yeah. you guys can schmooze. Because, look, I even did this in radio. People, oh, it's got to be very tight. No, it doesn't. I had to run down the hall and pee, okay? I cannot make it down the hall and back here in 60 seconds. And it doesn't say if there are three or four spots or whatever sometimes. So, yeah, if I'm not back and just jump in and go, yeah, lame ass must be down the hall. He'll be back in about two seconds. You know, that. no problem. Or you can just change the story completely and go, what he said in the first half or hour was 100% wrong. You can do that, too. <laughs> what do you think? I'll add that one to my toolbox. Yeah. There's a shock. Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5's <laughs> Chris Hagert is brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. That's 925, uh, excuse me, 952-925-5608. I want to get that right make sure you got the right info. Mr. Eggert, what's the latest? Tommy, uh, I appreciate your story about looking up at the big uh, picture of Jesus. And I, <laughs> I had a one person even smiled. So I had a similar um, conundrum when one of my buddies was getting married a number of years ago. And of course we were young and probably partying or whatever. And we were in that wedding and we were waiting to take the pictures. And I don't know why it occurred to me, but I looked, I, I like pretend to be mad about something. And I looked at the cross and I'm like, JC, you know, like I was angry about something and I'm like, <laughs> whoops, I looked over at my buddies and they're like, <laughs> like to me, it worked at the time, but I, yeah, no, he's got a sense of humor anymore. Everybody hates everybody else. Get a sense of humor again for God. How do stand up comedians even Tevin, you worked in the comedy business. Mm-hmm. How do these people make anybody like, you can't say anything. You can't do anything. Nobody's got a sense of humor anymore. What the hell? Right. Like you're telling me that God doesn't appreciate a good joke every once in a while. Right. Yeah. God gave us our senses of humor, albeit some of ours better than others. Yeah. Also, (laughs) that's God's son. And nobody gets madder at somebody than like the dad of a son. So, like, God probably wants to shit talk Jesus a little too. See? (laughs) Now we're talking. That's that makes common sense right there. Is what cut your does. hair, hippie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah tripo. <laughs> and when you stop wearing dresses, for God's sake, put some pants on, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could walk around the robe. That might not be the worst thing in the world, right? Yeah, like you're Birkenstocks. That. You're just robing at all <laughs> time. Got the Birks on, <laughs> chilling. Not have to cut the hair. You don't have to shave. Like you got to look. You right. know, AJ. Yeah, I mean, I barely bathe as is, so I know I'm right there with them. Oh, I, wow. I wasn't saying that, but you definitely got the look going on. If you wore a robe, you could definitely be our RJC. Yeah, you know, just uh, if if there was junk food and little Debbie's around back in zero <laughs> AD, <laughs> you're, instead of turning water to wine and fish to whatever, you're turning things to little Debbie snacks. The yeah. little Debbie's, yeah. <laughs> there it's nice in the- job. Nice job. That's all I got. Yeah, I just. I don't understand people that have no sense of humor now about anything. Nothing's funny. Oh, you, you're you're really victimizing people. Yeah, I know. That's why it's funny, because I'm victimizing people. That's exactly right. <laughs> no, you're not victimizing anybody, a pain in the ass, you big baby. God. <laughs> don't you love a good laugh? Let me tell you a great joke. Absolutely. Okay, let me just point something out to you guys. This is very true, and Tevin, you can lie and say this is not true. Okay. But I used to walk up upon, you know, a group of students standing in the hallway at North High School, and they were all black students at the time, but I knew most of them because they lived right by me, all the rest of it. They're telling jokes, and we don't look too good in most of those jokes, I will tell you. Honkies don't look too good in group jokes with black people. 
Oh, that's not true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you couldn't even yeah. That, yeah. that sounded very genuine. That was the funniest <laughs> voice I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, true. True. Uh, no idea what you're talking about. You might Tom. be up for an Oscar for that right. one. I will tell you, someday we'll get into humor. There's no question about it. People will laugh again. I'm hope- Are there any funny movies out right now, actually? Uh, I don't Not know. Really? Did they, did, well, it's funny you bring that up because I the um, Golden Globe nominations just dropped a couple minutes ago, and I was oh, okay. going to run through a couple, couple of those for you. Uh, and one of them, I guess, was funny. I think the parts that I laughed at were maybe not the parts that the rest of the world laughed at, but Barbie, <laughs> Barbie got like nine nominations, which is the highest of all this year's movies. Did you guys as to what parts you laughed at? Though? Yeah. <laughs> like not probably the parts that they thought were supposed to be funny. <laughs> and I guess Chris, you've seen the movie, Brittany, you saw the movie as well. Yeah. Was it cinematically great where you're like, this is a golden globe. I don't know. Movie? I don't, like it's not like I put the Golden Globes or the awards on some pedestal. So I wasn't like, "What? This is not a Golden Globe." Like so, yeah, it's fine. I don't know. I liked the movie. I had fun. I went with my nanny family, a bunch of women. We dressed up, so it was like it was a vibe. And like, did it probably save the theater more than any other Tom Hay or uh, Tom Cruise movie that he claimed was going to save the theater? Probably. I mean, at least it extended their life a little bit. They needed the life support, but yeah. I don't. I'm not, I'm not too wrapped up in like who's gonna get best picture this year. Well, yeah, fine. I thought I'd bring you this valuable information that was hot off the press, and if you don't care about it, then I can. That's not what Way I mean, go. Christopher. Way to go, Brittany. No, you've ruined everything. No, Christopher. No, I just mean mad. like I don't hold them sacred. Like I like award shows. I watch them often, but I don't like. I don't put too much value. Of course, they're gonna put a bunch of Barbie on for Barbie because it, it you know, but. Was it? Were there some holes in the movie? Yeah. Were there some there some things not explained? If you die in Barbie world, do you die in real world? Like there are some things I'm still asking about. If that's what you want, you poke holes in the movie. Thank you. Uh, did that's anybody else see it? Tom, did you see it? Did Barbie. No. Yeah. AJ? Do you know me? I'm waiting Barbie. for it on streaming. I do plan on watching because I've heard it's actually pretty solid. But I, I haven't been to like a movie theater in a long time. That's sad, isn't it? I mean, I understand why you haven't been, but but it makes me sad because going to dinner in a movie was the oh my god, it was great. I know. Fun back I, know. In the day. I agree. Well, I, well I, I will tell you one movie experience that I had. I didn't watch the movie. Catherine did, but I uh, Catherine turned on uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. That's that's nominated, by the way. I was I saw yeah. that Catherine had seen yeah. that. Not that um, cares. I went to bed because she was going to watch the movie, and then when I got up, the movie was almost done. Dang. The movie's three and a half hours long. I yeah. am not watching a movie that's three and a half hours long unless it's The Godfather. That's it. <laughs> right? Yeah, that one is up for best drama movie um, with a bunch of other movies I haven't heard of except for Oppenheimer. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw the long. first 25 or 30 minutes of Barbie and laughed a couple of times, and then I fell asleep for the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you're an adult man that's probably the correct response to that. well that's kind of what i was thinking and there might have been a little maker's mark involved in that too oh, but, oh, um, glug. boy. i'm looking over the rest of these i don't even know what um geez best actor male actor in a television comedy bill Hader from barry yeah is that a comedy i guess it's a dark no, barry. comedy right okay i can i tell you the absolute truth yeah. Mm-hmm. I made it about a season and a half. I, it's, I thought it was terrible. And people loved that people show. People do love it. Uh, I thought it was terrible. I'm, I'm kind of on the fence on it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with Tom. After one, it's the first season, immaculate. Great. Funny. Yeah. Yep. It's yep. kind of like the Dexter's though, where you go, this isn't mm. sustainable. <laughs> you can't just be a mass murderer yeah. and then like have, conne- or not a mass murderer, but like a, you know, killing a bunch of people and having like a close knit group of friends. Like it just doesn't work like that. Yeah. I love your reasoning. Not really a mass murderer, but you kill a lot of people. That yeah, would be I a guess, mass murderer. Right, isn't it serial killer? Is that if technically the, what it is? If the That's Boston peak, or the was it the Boston massacre was what four or five people? Like it's kind of yeah, a low right. bar. 
Right. Sorry, no, too good. soon. Was that too soon to talk about? Very, very confused is what point you tried to make. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Like how the box. Look, I got nothing against Bill Hader. And, and as Brittany said, the first season was really good. But as soon as season two kicked in, I was like, this is not good at all. I got through about three episodes and I said, I can't watch this. It's just, I thought it was terrible. So the other people up for the, the male actor, Steve Martin, Only Murders in the Building. Whoa. Uh, Jason Siegel from Shrinking, Martin Short, Only Murders in the Building, Jason Sudeikis from uh, Ted Lasso, and Jeremy Allen White from The Bear, which I hear is really good too, but I haven't yeah. seen that. Oh, you have to watch The Bear. Is that a restaurant have ever, deal? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever worked yeah. in the service industry, Chris, in uh, your younger years? Oh, uh, yeah. You'll, you'll, you'll appreciate it. If you anybody that's worked in the service industry, 10 out of 10 have to watch The Bear. Okay. I'll, I, I, need to get, I need to get on that. Well, absolutely. Let's go. Instead of watch, instead of wasting time watching Barbie. Yes. Oh. Now, Brittany, you didn't go as nuts over Barbie as you did over Taylor Swift. I mean, I had a great time at Barbie, but like, did you? yeah, like those are the only two movies I went to. I mean, I don't really get out of the house much, but it was like an event. I had, you know, it's scheduled people I went with. So it's hard to get me to the movies. I'm not trying yeah. to go. I used to love going to movie theaters. I, I honestly got to go out and have a little dinner, go to the movie theater. It was wonderful. Great experience. But I guess people just, well, people don't want to be around each other anymore. That's a big part of it. You know, they have the convenience of sitting at home, streaming whatever they want, whenever they want to do it. That's pretty hard to beat, man. I, I, I My wife has been like, let's go to a movie. And I'm like, I'm fine with going. That's how she talks. Um, hey, Chris, what time are you hey, coming? Let's go to a movie, Chris. Chris, it's date night. Um, and I'm like, okay, I'm okay with it. But I'm like, every time we think about it, I'm like, what do you want to see? And there's not anything I want to see. So that's yeah, yeah. that's kind of a catch twenty two, right? Like it's, I feel like a lot of the movies are coming out on the streaming services, and they're going there directly, and they're not even going in the theater. It's just a different world. There's no doubt about it. And it's interesting because, you know, uh, what is it? Murder in Venice, I think. The the, the uh, Agatha Christie movies are always good, but she was such a great writer. And, and it's a redo, obviously. So, you know, I, I had seen it a couple of different uh, iterations before. But that was a good movie. And the woman that was in it was terrific. What's her name again? Um, God, she's uh, a wasn't it Tina Fey? Yeah, was it Tina was Fey? It Tina or was it Tina uh, Fey? I think you're Venice. right. I think it was. Okay. I've never liked her until that movie. I thought she was terrific in the movie. She was really good. So I just don't like Saturday Night Live. That I don't blame it on the people. Saturday Night Live has never been funny to me. First year or two, that was about it. And then it just got very political. Not even the kind of the the golden years of it with like Will Ferrell and all those nope. guys. I thought Will Ferrell was terrific in in uh, what Elf. is it Elf? Yeah, he was terrific. Anything else he's ever done, I thought sucked. But he was really good in Elf. I thought he was terrific in Elf. What about his role as Frank the Tank in um, Old, School. Old School? I don't think I ever saw that. Is it good? Yeah, that doesn't I, seem like a Tom type no, of movie. That's, not <laughs> it's not it's not not that's kind of why I brought it up. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I, I just that real silly, over the top silly thing has never mm -hmm. been my deal. He's Tom. There's a movie he's in called Kicking and Screaming, oh and God, it is one of the. Fun, never he's heard. Really, he's really he, he's not over the top in it. Oh, okay. He's coaching um a little kid's soccer team, and it is so funny. Like, I actually think it might be one of his funniest movies he's uh, he's in ever. It's so funny. It's Kicking so and funny. screaming. It's called. Yes. Oh, it's, I'll give it a whirl. Underrated. I feel like nobody talks about it, but he, okay. like, it's so good. And then, like, I, the first time I ever watched that, randomly, Mike Ditka has an insanely <laughs> large role. <laughs> it's, huge. it's his dad. It is his, yeah. or no, his dad's uh, enemy. And it's so funny. And he's super involved in it. So good. Yeah, I think that movie doesn't get as much shine as his others because it kind of came at the tail end of everybody getting, I'm Will ferrell out because it was the string of movies oh, where he kind of played yeah. the same character yeah. over and over. And so they're like, ah, this is kicking the stream. It's probably the same. See, I think it was before that. Was it before? Because it was before like Step Brothers. It was, it was oh, okay. I thought it was after. This was like 05. This oh, was like okay. before he really got got to like will ferrell level because isn't uh mark Wahlberg in that movie too kicking and screaming no no okay i don't See, know it. but now i have a movie to watch tonight i'm very yeah, happy thank I've been you for the for recommendations you guys tom yeah, no you, problem tom you want to have a, a movie night yeah, absolutely <laughs> what time are you coming over 
Um, it's like uh, 1130 in the morning. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, that'll be perfect. What, on a weekday, 1130? Yeah, that'd be perfect. That'll work okay. out just fine. No question about it. Hey, can, Ooh, you, go can uh, Chris just nap in front of you, Tom, is what he's asking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, he's, that's all he's done. <laughs> I've done him over 10 years. And you'll put a movie on and then I'll just sleep. So, yeah, that'll be fun. Well, most of the movies now would put you to sleep, so I understand. The movies suck now. They just do. They're just not very good. You They're guys not have... the Godfather, I'll tell you that right now. No, they are not. All right, young man, get get off your ass and get to work. Uh, I'll think about it. Don't tell me what to do. It's a good <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have a good day. Thanks See a lot. Ladies and gentlemen. Chris Eggert with us. That's all I have to say to you. We'll take a break. Come right back with, hey, Tom, it's Bob. I say, speaking of kicking and screaming, <laughs> mostly yeah. screaming, by the yeah. way, <laughs> a lot of not, not a lot of kicking, but a lot of screaming. We shall take a break. Be right back with Bob Sands for a couple of minutes. Holiday shopping season is happening right now, and you can save up to 70 percent off your shopping with the Tom Bernard Holiday Online Auction, December 8th through the 14th. Auction items include e-bikes from EcoFun Motorsports. I love that. A 9x12 cargo trailer from Pleasureland RV or a Canadian fishing trip at Fletcher Lake Resort. I have had friends. I've not been there, but my friends go there all the time. They just love Fletcher Lake Resort. So, yeah, e-bikes from EcoFun Motorsports, a 9x12 cargo trailer from Pleasureland RV, a Canadian fishing trip at Fletcher Lake Resort. Visit TomBernardShow.com and enter keyword auction to view items and bid. That's TomBernardShow.com, keyword auction. Bidding ends December 14th. Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC has a mutiny on his hands. His sales crew said they've had it brooming snow off the new Buicks and GMCs, then warm them up, move them to plow, and repark them again. He even overheard them cooking up an alternative plan, a sale. This is crazy. Why don't we just mark them down and sell them? This is getting real old to be out on that lot in this sub-zero weather. That's right. Everyone we sell is one less to broom. I heard we're supposed to get six more inches tomorrow. I'm 5'6". How am I supposed to get the snow off the roof of a pickup? I'm Jim Paul, and, well, car dealers do have all kinds of crazy sales. This idea probably makes more sense than most. There's plenty of inventory, so, okay, the crew has decided. Yeah! yeah, no, yeah. yeah. So, then it's official. The We Don't Want to Broom Snow sale is in full force at Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings. Snowy inventory priced real right at valleycardealers.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Ladies and gentlemen, you know the song Kokomo. It's supposed to be out the Florida Keys, right? Well, I hate to break your Beach Boys bubble, but that is a fictitious place they made up for the song. Fortunately for the rest of us, the Florida Keys island chain are as real as the taxes you have to pay in Minnesota if you're a resident now. Now, that's the reason to move south. In addition to Florida and all of Monroe County being beautiful, the Keys from Key Largo to Key West are even more beautiful This is Tom Bernard, part-time Florida resident myself. And if you want a second house or a new retirement home or want some, you know, you want to become a Floridian maybe, may I suggest you contact Matt Carlson from One Key West Realty. Matt grew up in Litchfield and he's a super real estate agent. When it comes to finding your tropical island space in the Keys, he lives there and here. And Matt knows what's best in Key West to buy for your second home in Florida. Matt teamed up with fellow Minnesotan from Sartell and Alexandria, Kristen Eklund, who's one of the top mortgage brokers in the country from Coast to Coast Mortgage. She'll get you the financing you need to buy a home in Florida or in Minnesota. Matt's part of uh, the Lake Sotheby's International Realty Group here in Minnesota. And Kristen 
His mortgage colleague lives and works in the Keys, so they both know the Florida Keys' new and existing homes for sale and are Minnesotan through and through. Contact them by heading to onekeywest.com. That is onekeywest.com. What do you think of that action? Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Sansevier Sports brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Sanny, what is happening, Pally? Well, now I got to ask, because uh, I know you are a huge Godfather fan, and I don't know yes, if it's Brittany and uh, AJ and Tevin, you guys are Godfather fans too? Cause you yeah, can. yeah. Right. Leave so the gun, you- take the cannoli. Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because Josh Dobbs is the NFL version of Paulie. You won't see him no more. <laughs> oh. I like that, Sandy. Uh, that's he a great pick. It just uh, and he should not have. He should have been yanked long before uh, the end of the third quarter. Or how long he lasted yeah. should have been done even before halftime. He almost got the best wide receiver in football. The Viking star player killed with that pass over the middle. And then he winds up, uh, Justin Jefferson winds up going to the hospital to be checked. And that's never a good thing. I mean, mm-hmm. guys get hurt, but you don't normally hear about the hospital visit. So they probably want yeah, to no check make sure nothing, yeah, nothing was broken in there, but this team is, uh, and it's not like, Oh, Nick Mullins. He was great. He wasn't great at all. He just was able to complete a pass against the team. I mean, zero, zero through three quarters. Second time ever the Vikings have had that happen. And I was stunned to see the Raiders have never been 0-0 through three quarters until yesterday. Bob, let me ask you a question. Because yeah. it seems to me like the head coach has got some smarts. He, he seems to anyway. I've never met him. I don't know him. But he seems to know what he's doing. Am I wrong about that? No, I think he is. But you know what he's got? And it's a it's great as a character, uh, you know, as part of his character. But it's not great as an NFL coach. He's got compassion. Because they told the story, if you watched it, if you watched the game about the reason he started Dobbs, he wanted to give him another chance because this was about the time that teams give up on him. So he yeah. decided to give him that other chance. you got to be ruthless as an NFL coach. And he should yeah. have had a quicker hook than he did. It was very obvious early on that he was not going to get anything going. Mm. And I wonder if his reasoning for keeping him in there, because we were losing linemen, it felt like every other time we snapped the football. So I wonder <laughs> if he thought, you know, well, we need a mobile quarterback, and Dobbs is much more mobile. But than- he wanted, other than one run, he wasn't he wasn't showing any mobility. Yeah, but I mean, in like the reasoning being like, oh, he if he's going to be under duress all the time, he has a better chance of escaping it, even though he wasn't than a Nick Mullins does. Which yeah, but he, he went into the game with those without the guys being banged up. He made the decision to start him. Yeah, and I, you know, I I, I thought he should have been putting Jaron Hall in. Oh, you know, 100%. But, he, he, but he was not even active, so he was not an option. And it it could have been. Uh, I mean. A, Nick Mullins is a, a just like we've seen Josh Dobbs, a journeyman quarterback. They're mm-hmm. not going to go anywhere with him. Now, we'll see what happens in Cincinnati when you got another journeyman quarterback, Jake Browning, been with the Vikings on twice, two stints on that uh, their practice squad. The thing about Jake Browning, he had another good game yesterday, but Josh Dobbs had two good games, and the bottom fell out. So defenses figure these guys out. Yeah. Do okay. you think? Oh, do you think that uh, going into next week, it'll be Mullins starting with Jaron Hall as the backup and Dobbs not on yes. roster? Yeah, I don't. Well, he'll be inactive. Or, no, yeah, inactive, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, I think he, that's really the only play he should make or could maybe. Keep in mind, Jaron Hall had, was starting the game that we saw Josh Dobbs come in and win. Mm-hmm. And he, he had two really good games. So we can't take that away from him, but that's about it. Bob, I have to ask you this question, though, because Dobbs is a very smart guy. He's like an astrophysicist or something, isn't he? Yeah, but mm-hmm. everybody in that room with you or in that on the show, other than me, is smart people. Oh, so here we go. You want to put us in there and play quarter? Hey, there's a what? lot of smart. You think? How do you think Einstein would have done as an NFL quarterback? <laughs> yeah, let me think about that. Let me get back to you. Um, but don't try to suck up to the people on the show here either, Bob. That was very embarrassing. Yeah, we no, can't no. do anything for you or your career, so I don't know why you're <laughs> notice. But did you notice this was a sociological test? None of them argued with me. No, they did not. You're absolutely oh, right. we're dumb. I'm so dumb. They oh. weren't smart enough to argue. <laughs> you have no idea how dumb I am, Bob. Yes, sir. <laughs> don't sell us short. Oh, 
Oh, you've all given hints. Danny, I got to tell you, I already told everybody on the show this, they know, because we talked about it at the opening of the show. I didn't watch one minute of that show or the previous one in Chicago. That game, I should say, not show. You are the wise one. I can't. This team is driving me insane. They have very little talent on that team. Very little. Yeah, there's talent on the team, but it's like just who? not. It, it, well, I mean, wh- what side of the ball you want to talk about? Either I, one. Okay. Justin Jefferson has got talent, but he's always hurt now. Well, not always hurt. He had a first injury of his career. <laughs> That's what Came I'm saying. He's always got, hurt. In 2023, he's almost always almost got killed. I know that was absurd. And I yeah. mean that Jordan Addison's a good player. TJ Hawkinson is a good yeah, player. He's I mean, okay. Christian Derrissaw is one of the best left tackles in in football. And uh, Daniel yeah. Hunter is terrific. This Ivan yeah. Pace Jr., the kid that they have. You know, a linebacker had made a late interception and basically put the game away. He's going to be a really good player. Also, maybe he, it is the coach, the head coach. It's, if it's such a good team with all this talent, what the hell is his problem? Well, I mean, I I still am not ready to close the books and say what a great coach he is. I mean, I think a no. lot of people are rethinking Bill Belichick, the greatest coach ever, oh. with Tom Brady. Oh, he yeah. was great. I mean, what has he done since? <laughs> you need a you need a quarterback. Is what we're we're learning here. Is yeah, you can't, uh, you can't have a quarterback that he uh, skips the ball to the receivers or no. air mails it over their head. And what well, we've we're learning here too. Watching, I mean, it's a small sample size, but when they draft a quarterback, which they will do, the mobile quarterbacks, I don't think those are his style of quarterbacks. I think he does like the drop back quarterback. And that, uh, I mean, that limits the guys that he'd be because a lot of these kids coming out are guys who can run and can move, and you know they they're not drop back quarterbacks. The best quarterback, college quarterback for this team, might be JJ McCarthy from Michigan because that's what he is, and he's mm-hmm. run a lot of play action, and he played for a guy that was an NFL coach and will be again, Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. And I think a lot of these quarterbacks coming out do have the mobile aspect, but I think they use it in a way where it's not their go to like a Michael, when Michael Vick was running around, he preferred to run rather than throw early in his career. Where I think if we got like a LSU's Jaden McDaniel or Jim McDaniel, Jaden Daniels type where he can run, but he is still can throw the ball and relies he, on his He can throw, but he ran for over a thousand yards. This kid is a runner. I mean, that's the problem where you, what you risk is, and to me, the best example was Robert Griffith III. He was mm-hmm. terrific, but he ran too much and got hurt and ruined his career. Justin yeah. Fields strikes me as that kind of a guy, too, that he's a better runner than passer now, but he could be fantastic, but he has to stay healthy. And yep. I think we've seen that in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson. He is not running nearly as much as he once did, and it's made a difference in the way he's been able to play. I mean, that could wind up being the team that the AFC has to go through in the playoffs Absolutely. that are Miami because the uh the Chiefs are done as for hosting throughout the playoffs that that yet mm-hmm. that loss yesterday put a it was a nail in them and, and Bob it was very clear that he was lined up off sides there's no question that he was no and but you know what this is this is there's a reason Kadarius Tony is not on the field for every play well yeah <laughs> he's a well, knucklehead I don't think he could he, he can't first of all if you're a wide receiver you watch in a lot of games, they look to the line judge to make sure they're not off sides. It's mm-hmm. not that hard to do. Right. Or, I mean, there's a little bit of leeway. It's not like if you're not right, absolutely within an inch of the line, they're going to call you for being off the line or being too far back. You got a little bit of room there. He needed to look better. Maybe he has problems with depth perception. Or what is it called when it's linear? You can't tell if you're <laughs> in front or behind the line. <laughs> I like now, Bob. I need your vote on this one. If you could name one knucklehead on this show, who would it be? Well, I'll default to me. Tevin just Tevin just went blank yes. on my screen. My, my computer is. <laughs> I've had to restart this thing. Like, well, seven. I'm guessing he's the knucklehead because he can't stay on the air. That's yeah. all I can hear him. As soon as I said knucklehead, his screen went black. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it can happen to all of us. It'll probably happen to me in the next few <laughs> nanoseconds. <laughs> that was thank you, God. There must be a God because the timing on that was beautiful. <laughs> was, uh, hey, who loves you more than me? Oh, uh, poor. <laughs> I go, who's a knucklehead? Is he, 
black screen. <laughs> but we could hear him. I mean, Tevin, can you talk? You had to be heard. Yeah, no, I can. So the we're having. I don't know if it's Wi-Fi issues. What's going on? But the computer that I'm on just will randomly not connect to the Wi-Fi, and then I see a bunch of black. Your screens go black on my end, and then it, everything just shuts down. Oh, God. <sighs> High tech, high tech uh, operation. That's all I have. So we still didn't give us your vote, Bob. Who's the knucklehead on the show? Well, yeah. I told you I voted for Tevin because he can't stay on the air. <laughs> it's all I'm Tevin's back. fault. Okay, we can't. Oh, okay, I, you Ooh, can't back. say that he is back. There he goes. All right, he's not a knucklehead anymore. And I can't vote for AJ because he could take me off the air with the push of a button. Oh, I was hovering over it, Bob. I was waiting for it. <laughs> I know. And I would never do it to Brittany because she's a sensitive little flower. Yeah, exactly. I know that. Tevin's screen went black again. Yeah, he's he's where I'm going to pull him out for the time. Being. He's, getting, <laughs> he's getting it worked out over there. <laughs> the timing of it. Once again, thank you, God. Your timing was amazing. There he is. Tevin's back with us now. Exactly. Hey. Tevin is the uh, he's the Pauly of the Tom Bernard show. You won't see him no more, but you then you will again. <laughs> <laughs> you won't. <laughs> That's a pretty good take. I like that take, actually. So, Sandy, we got a hockey team. We got a basketball team. Best we... team in f the NBA, based yep. on record. Yep. And uh, they don't need to win no in-season tournaments to show how good they are. They've won six straight. Whose idea was that, the in-season tournament? Oh, what a and, bad idea. And all these LeBron sycophants, he's won his fifth title. Uh, what are you nuts? God. It's a, it's a pseudo title. It's a trumped up marketing ploy. And to believe it's anything more than that, you've got issues. Issues. You got issues. You got issues. Bob, did you watch the championship game? For Not this? a nanosecond of it. Oh, damn. So the way they. So the game, whatever, it was a competitive basketball game. We're happy for you. But the way they broadcasted it, the stands were all, like, dim and blacked out. Like, it was a different what? look aesthetically. Like, was there nobody there? <laughs> no, like, they normally, like, the stadium, just all the lights are on. You can see yeah. the stands and everything. Well, this, they had it almost like the lights off, except for directly on the court. So everything else was black around them, except, like, the court obviously you could see like it's hard it's to explain. Right. It's super super cool i wish it's they would just, do that more often really? i feel like, that's it's like, a boxing like the match. the neutral site aspect of it because when you're at home if you're hosting mm. a team you want to see the fans you want to see how rowdy everybody is yeah but this is like a neutral site blah 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 so yeah i, I i'm it cool felt, with that it felt but, futuristic like there were lights that would flash in the stands like when people ooh. scored and stuff like it it was super super cool i wish it's they a marketing would ploy they're gonna do everything they can to try to trump this thing up <laughs> You know, I was in, uh, what's that? You know, what we should do, and I'm very serious about this. I was just looking at the, you know, the docket for for today, and there are other couple other days. I think during the week too, we should have people call into the show during the first hour on Mondays, Fridays, because you got Phil Mackey, you got Bob Sansevier, Chris Eggert likes sports too. We should have people call in and make their comments because man, I heard some comments yesterday. Woo. Score North had a few people that were a little pissed off calling in. I'll tell you that. And imagine uh, if they Bud lights lost. in their stomach. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe well, a couple, Bud sure. Light or two. Maybe a Bud Light or two. So, what else you got, Sanny? Well, you've got the. Uh, you talked about Shohei Otani, right? No oh, God, let's talk about it again. I I thought I would be the highest paid baseball player ever at seven dollars, but then they added a bunch of zeros behind that. Well, Tom, by the time it took you to say that sentence, Shohei Otani made over twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> he makes two dollars and twenty two cents per second. Ten years, seven hundred million. Seven hundred million. Seven hundred million dollars, Bob. And the guy can't even pitch for this year. He's not going to pitch next year. Oh, he's not just uh, like follow no. along with how his agent, him and his agent, like played everybody uh, this past like Friday and Saturday. They sent out they leaked like random stuff that he was going to be joining the Blue Jays and they put um, oh, God. Henry's one of the Shark Tank guys mm -hmm. on the same agency on a plane going from L.A. to Toronto. And everybody's following and flight tracking, and people are like, he's going. The uh, Blue Jays fans are tweeting, like, let's go. Even Blue Jays players are like, wait, is this actually happening? This is awesome. It turns out they, he gets off the plane. It's the Shark Tank guy. It was all just a ploy to have the Dodgers come in with one last, like, 
seven hundred million dollars wow. over ten years. Played everybody like a fiddle. Well, That's how good. how can the Dodgers be that stupid? Nobody's gonna take Canadian money. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't it doesn't have the value. I mean, it's, there's things involved with playing in Canada that could because then you play in Canada and then you come here and you have to pay all the money on the U.S. side too, right? Yeah. These players, I mean, you got to have a good accountant to yeah. keep track, especially when it's NBA and baseball with that. Cause every city they have to pay taxes to that state when they play in that city. Mm-hmm. And his God, taxes are good. I mean, one trip to Minnesota, his taxes are going to be brutal. Well, yeah. Well, for Shohei. If he's playing in LA, he's already, uh, you actually, go with 700. He actually is getting about 350 million. They'll get more than half of that. Yeah. Well, there's a picture circulating on X or Twitter uh, that's been going around where somebody put together like a mock, like ADP paycheck for him. <laughs> and so like it's like, it. okay, his, his earnings are, uh, well, let's see, 1.3 million. And then the taxes getting taken out are $734,000. Isn't that unbelievable? Yeah. You know, the poor guy's going to be on a soup line before long with this contract. I was gonna say, yeah, can't, uh, <laughs> he's going to have to get a second job. But how did we ever allow our government to take over our personal lives the way they have? And it only started in the early 1900s. This has only been going on for about 110 years, you know. And gotten worse. And gotten worse and worse. And it's going to keep getting worse until we end up like some shithole over in Europe that pays 90% income tax. Yes, but we're probably funding that uh, that shithole. <laughs> That's probably. I mean, true that, that, too. I'm not going to get on a discourse about it, but our problem is we give too much money away to too many countries oh, and don't take no care problem. of our own. Mm-hmm. And don't you think you should allow the citizens who paid that money in the first place to be able to vote on whether we should do that or not? Well, at least their representative should have a vote. Absolutely. I don't get it, man. It's we're way out of control with this money situation. No question about it. All right, Sandy, what else? Well, I mean, you, again, you, you you mentioned the Wild, and they uh, they had a little bit of a good start with John Hines, and then they had a little bit of a – I don't know what's going to happen with that team. I mean, it's uh, it's a team that, again, like the new quarterback, Josh Dobbs, comes in, oh, look at that, oh, we got our pastor or not, and then the bottom falls out. Hines, oh, new coach, look at that. Well, maybe the bottom's going to fall out. AJ, would yeah. AJ, you think the bottom's going to fall out with him or what? Well, the- what, it, what he did last night, and I actually respect him for this, for the longest time, Matt Zuccarello has pretty much had an anchor on that top line with Kirill Kaprizov because, you know, they're buddies and they're friends and all that stuff. And Zuccarello has had – he's been very productive this year, but I think at times you have to switch things around just to kind of shake the lines up, get new chemistry, kind of see what's going to click. When everybody right. else isn't going on, one line can't win you a game. So he moved – uh, Rossi and Zuccarello down. Jewel Erickson Eck got moved up to center of the top line and moved Matthew Boldy to the top line. And that line looked very good last night. Matthew Boldy had another goal. He now has like five in five uh, of the past games. Marco Rossi had another goal. Um, he's kind of been thriving as well. So uh, the chemistry last night looked to have been ramped up over the past two games where they picked up losses. See, so, And I'm going to go back to the Vikings. Kevin O'Connell needs to have a little bit more John Hines in him because he wasn't compassionate. Well, let me see if this uh-huh. works. I'll give them another game or another two games. Just make the decision that's best for your team. Yes. Because that's what's you got to win games. And he had to know after that last game, Josh Dobbs was not going to. I, I think they this is the biggest problem I have with NFL coaches. They need a quick hook. At one point, starting pitchers in baseball played the entire nine innings or pitched the whole game. Yep. And at some point, it changed. It needs to change in the NFL. If your quarterback is struggling, yank him out. It doesn't mean – it does in the case of Dobbs, but it doesn't mean he should be benched forever. But take him out of that game because some guys just have bad days. And just have the quick hook. It's not a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, Bob. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. Like we have a quick hook on this one. What's the sports reporter's name? Is it Bob something? See Someone. you later. <laughs> you, won't, you won't see me no more. You won't see me around. You won't see him around here no more. Bob. Yeah, what? Yes, sir. On the way out, I got to tell you something because you watched the whole thing in one day. I watched uh, episode five of the season four of Fargo. That show gets better by the week. My God, that show's phenomenal. Yeah, I tried to watch it last night, and for whatever reason, I could. I kept getting season one popping up on Hulu. Hulu's where you watch it, right? 
Or where are you I watching so. it? I believe yeah. so. I think I think that's right. All right. So then I I said, "Ah, to hell with it. I'm going to watch Justified City Primeval." Love so that I, show too. I I have to. I started getting into that. Then I looked at my watch, and it was after midnight. I said, "Ah, I'll come back to it." So, but, but you're the, right. the latest season. Fargo was out. That's a good season. No, I'm not talking. Oh, that, that yeah, five's supposed to be good. But I'm I got seven oh, you're more four with four. Oh. Let's see oh. if you listened. You'd have known that in the first. Well, which one is five? Which okay? You Don't said season four, episode Stop five. Right here. Which episode is it? What? I literally told you that at the very beginning. No, you I told me what happened. What's it about? I'm not talking to you anymore. Track me here, would you? You're a disaster. <laughs> would you listen to what I'm asking? You're a complete I'm asking disaster. You. It's okay. <laughs> it was episode five of season four. Yes, and which one is that? I don't know. I'm not asking season. you who's on first, third base. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just want to know what was the plot in that one is all I was asking. You know what's really remember. great about this? What's really great about this is every parent who's listening right now is, okay, we're not going to tell the kids to get into either radio or podcasting. Because... <laughs> <laughs> it's the one where, well, you know, what's his name is in uh, in season four. You know that you Chris watch Rock. the whole thing. Um, well, no, Chris Rock is phenomenal, but he was talking Schwartz, about man. Justified. Uh, oh, yeah. No, Justified. He's in, he's in a, Timothy Oliphant is in it, too. He's the star. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, he's, he's, he's phenomenal. Yeah. So, but yeah, terrific. That season, Bob is getting better and better. And I, you know, I'm, I'm finished that and then watch season five because I've always liked John Han, Ham anyway. And I got to assume he's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's yeah. terrific. All right. Uh, just in case that he doesn't, he's not paying attention. Bye, Bob. We'll see you later. All right. I, I, I really think you won't see me no more after that exchange. See uh, I, could, I could not work <laughs> if you didn't exist, Bob. Yeah, if right. there was no Bob, I couldn't do it. I'd just quit. Okay. Well, there's no Bob right now. Sandy's out. Ladies and gentlemen, Bob Sands for Sports. <laughs> Brought to you by Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers. Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury lawyers seeking justice for the injured. Contact Bradshaw and Bryant at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. That's what I do love about people. I I start out by saying I watch season, I mean, I watched uh, episode five of season four. And, and Well, what, what episode did you watch? It's like, Jesus, Bob. You're like, season four, Bob. Season five? Season five? Season did four, you say five? five? Well, I like season three too. No, what's, season what's that one about? Four. Tell me what it's about. <laughs> what a Sanny. I've been stuck with him now. You know that the Q fired him five times when he worked with me over there. How does he keep getting back in the door? It's so wild. It's so wild. It's my fault. He's like a rash. He'll he'll go away <laughs> briefly and then just right on back. And you weirdly miss him when he's gone. Like I just love him, but he's absolutely unhinged, insane. Sandy's then- the best. And then he tries to pivot what he was asking, which was hilarious, and be like, yes. what? No. I know you meant season four. I meant <laughs> <laughs> See, That's a very good point. No, I know exactly what you're talking. No, you don't, Bob. You have no clue what I'm talking about. No question about it. But uh, you should have met him. Did you ever meet Bob's mother? No. Nope. She is... You know that mom and all the Italian, like the mobster movies and Italian, yeah. Based, mm-hmm. the yeah. mom's, that's his mother. And I'm not kidding you, his mother, you see the nice Italian woman from uh, New Jersey. And you can tell the second you say hello to her. Hey, Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Sansevier, how you doing? Eh, who are you? <laughs> that's one of those deals. She own a fur coat? Uh, oh, I think so. I think that's probably true. Well, that's a scene from what movie? When they when they rob the uh, the airport, and the first thing that happens, the guy shows up and his wife's wearing a brand new fur coat. That's uh, yeah. Goodfellas. Yep. Is, yeah, Goodfellas. There you go. Yeah, you want to tip anybody off where you got the money to buy the fur coat, wouldn't yeah. you, you dumbass? <laughs> Yeah, that was stupid or some people. The car was a wedding present. Right. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> and then ice pick right in the back of the neck. Oh, and you know, I'm looking at this. We got Phil, Phil Mackey on, then Chris Eggert, then you got Bob Sansevier. We got an interview coming up. You got Kristen Burt. We got a hell of a hell of a lineup. That's all I'm saying. What a sleep. Just, to be clear with, with everybody, I adore Bob Sansevier. Always have, always will. And his wife is better than he is. So there you go. Obviously. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's just a given, isn't it? Yeah, Mary's great. I have not read the uh, the sheet for uh, Zach Schoenfeld. He's going to be on. And we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, Nicholas Coppola. 
Nicholas Cage, the name he has to use. I am fascinated because I, I knew that years ago. We had uh, Nicholas Cage, Nick Cage on a couple of times on the morning show back in the day. You could not talk to a nicer guy. I mean, just very, very pleasant man, no question about it. It's going to be interesting to get Zach Schoenfeld's uh, take on him. Don't you always, because some people go, God, isn't he a great guy? No, he's horrible. <laughs> you know, yeah. not everybody sees things the same way. No, yeah. and Nick Cage is a very, he's very intriguing to me because he seems to be almost mocked by Hollywood because they're yeah. like, oh, his movies yeah. are terrible, but they're always super popular and entertaining. And so it's yeah. this weird juxtaposition of, well, is he really great or does everybody make fun of him? He's like he the does. Nickelback of actors. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. People don't want to like him. I love Nick yes. Cage. National Treasure rocks. Oh, we have to steal the Declaration of Independence. It was, what? <laughs> it was forged. It was sustained. It was... He's firm. At one point, doesn't he like rub lemon juice on it and is like blow dry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I gotta tell you, I don't know if you've ever seen it or not, but there is a clip from a guy in Sweden, and he finds out he can tell his car radio what to play. Have you ever seen this? And he's driving along, and he goes, "What like to hear Nickelback?" And this something comes on, and it's not Nickelback. No, no, Nickelback. For about 10 minutes, he screamed, Nickelback! The guy just <laughs> loses. You got you to gotta watch the video if you get a chance, because it's phenomenal. He loses his mind because the radio won't listen to him in his car. Fantastic. All right, we do have to take a break. we got a great guest coming. I, I am fascinated by this guest. It's going to be really interesting. Boy, I tell you what, though, I just lifted up the sheet. I wouldn't want him looking at me like that. Is he a, you guys see the one sheet? He looks stacked. He looks like this. Damn. Uh, he he oh, does wow. like the cool. Thing. Yeah, there you go. Picture, yeah. Ooh. You're right. Oh, your ass, man. That's all I'm saying. AJ, put Thank it you. down. It's too much. Right. I didn't mean to scare you. I didn't mean to scare you, man. We'll, we'll take a break. Come right back. Zach Schoenfeld will join us. How Coppola became Cage. This is fascinating to me. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful, someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you, Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions, and Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. Do yourself a favor. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. You got nothing to lose, and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952 925 5608. That's 952 925 5608. You'll be glad you did. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security and investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. You know that. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. I am Tom Bernard, and I am a paid endorser. Tom here, and I want to discuss a partnership that has been wonderful in my life, Zero Res Carpet Care. Very good friends of mine. Nothing is better to someone with a family than having a completely clean home. Your carpet is the biggest filter in your house. If you want to talk about pet dander or foot traffic, dirt from the outside, they all eventually reside in your carpet. So, Zero Res Carpet Care. Listen, around the holidays, you need to contact ZeroResMinnesota.com or call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. -E -E That's 952-Zero-Res. They clean your home with their electrolyzed pH elevated water that does doesn't use chemicals or soaps that smell like a janitor's closet like other cleaning services. How about a Tom Bernard deal? Well, here it is. Get three rooms, zero resified, starting at $129, and don't forget your air ducts. Mention me, and they'll discount your air vents by $75, bucks too. This is for the entire month, so call them right now, 9520-RES, backward or forward, it spells the same, or book online, zeroresminnesota.com. If it's available, ask for them to come to your place in the Tom Bernard name service truck. What an honor that was, by the way. Just mention me by name and get the special deal to get your home clean and your heart happy. Zero res carp. You know the song Kokomo? It's supposed to be off the Florida Keys, right? Hate to break your Beach Boys bubble, but that's a fictitious place they made up for the song. Fortunately for the rest of us, the Florida Keys island chain are as real as the taxes you have to pay in Minnesota if you're a resident. Now that's a reason to move south. In addition to Florida and all of Monroe County being beautiful, the keys from Key Largo to Key West are even more beautiful. This is Tom Bernard, part-time Florida resident myself. And if you want a second house or a new retirement home or want to become a Floridian, may I suggest you contact Matt Carlson from One Key West Realty. Matt grew up in Litchfield. He's a super real estate agent when it comes to finding your tropical island space in the Keys. 
He lives there and here, and Matt knows what's best in Key West to buy. For your second home in Florida, Matt teamed up with fellow Minnesotan from Sartell and Alexandria, Kristen Eklund, who's one of the top mortgage brokers in the country from Coast to Coast Mortgage. She'll get you the financing you need to buy a home in Florida or in Minnesota. Matt's part of the Lake Sotheby's International Realty Group here in Minnesota, and Kristen, his mortgage colleague, lives and works in the Keys, so they both know the Florida Keys' new and existing homes for sale and are Minnesotan through and through. Contact them by heading to onekeywest.com. Would Brittany go home? What happened? Oh, wait a minute. She's at home. Never. See, somebody had to drop a deuce. Yeah, I think, uh, is that what you were? Was it number two or number one, Brittany? Oh, no. <laughs> she goes, oh, no. No. Oh, no. But I'm a really quick pooper. So if it was pooping, it would uh, I would have been back pretty quick. Plus, I'm like an inch from the bathroom. But no, I had to run and do something quick. But I oh, I'd make it in time. You know how time That's just like. problem. But I've I, never cared about stuff like that. If you're you tell you gotta, my hair is all chaotic, I was sprinting. You were sprinting? Yeah. Is Mr. Schoenfeld ready to go? Oh, you're yeah. coming up now? Oh, excellent. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Zach Schoenfeld, our very special guest, how Coppola became Cage, an in-depth look at one of the film industry's most audacious working actors. 1982, a gangly teenager named Nicholas Coppola made his film debut and changed his name to Nicholas Cage, determined to distance himself from his famous family. Zach, how are you today, sir? Good. Good. Thank you for having me. I'm telling you, I am uh, very fired up. First of all, way to send that promo picture. I'm looking at you. You're looking at me like, hey, Tom, you better do a good interview. I'm going to kill you. That's what you look like in your picture. <laughs> Is it you too look- serious? Oh, yeah. You look very serious in this picture. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Well, Nothing I'm serious out there. Zach, I will tell you something. You're talking about one of my favorite actors out there. I, I was lucky enough. I did a morning show in town for about 9,000 years here, and uh, we had uh, Nicholas Cage on a, a few times. Just a very – he to me, he was a very pleasant guy, a great interview, very interesting. I was very impressed with him. What, what's your take on that? Yeah, he's, he's a very interesting guy. Um, you know, I think because, because he often plays crazy people and lunatics in his films, I think people, when they interview him, they expect him to be – you know, a bit of a loose cannon, but I interviewed him back when I was working at Newsweek. Um, and he was very, very generous, very respectful and thoughtful. Yeah. No question about it. I, I just, he's a very smart man too. That's the other thing. I don't think Nicholas Cage gets the credit for being as intelligent as he acts. He's a very smart guy. He is. And part of that is because he, his father was, a, was a literature professor and his father had him reading all kinds of books and, father was showing him like Bergman and Fellini films when, when Cage was a very young kid. And that, that had a profound effect on him when, when he was quite young. I will tell you the one thing I have to take back a little bit, I would say 99% of the time, he's a very smart guy. And then there's a 1% of the time where he buys like 11 castles in Europe. And he's got that part of part of him too. Yeah. He, he, He's been, he's definitely a big spender and um, he bought crazy amounts of real estate, sports cars. <laughs> At one point, he bought a rare dinosaur skull. And um, I think part of the reason why he's been so prolific over the past 15 years and he's, he's been doing like four or five movies a year is because he had to dig himself out of real estate debt. Yes. That is very true. I, I'm telling you, I'm one of those guys, though, Zach, that if Nicolas Cage is in it, I will watch it because I, I do enjoy his work that much. Yeah, what's, what's your favorite performance by him? God, that's hard to say because he can play. What was the name of the movie he was in with? Uh, what the hell's her name? Uh, uh, Cher. He was in a movie with Cher, and I, I thought it was going to be a terrible movie, and it was good. Yes, yeah. It's a classic. It's 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 a very romantic film. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. Good point. What's the name of the film? Moonstruck. You're thinking of Moonstruck. Moonstruck. Yes. There you go. I, I said, he surprised me how good he was in that movie. And I, I think the movie was terrific. He, he can play, I mean, he can play a great psychopath too. There's no doubt about that. Right. Right. Yeah. And he, he does play a pretty dark, isolated brooding character in Moonstruck, but then, when mm-hmm. he meets Cher, she sweeps him off his feet, and you know he kind of transforms into this handsome, tuxedo-clad, opera-loving uh, heartthrob. 
Zach, do you think what's happening to him right now? Because he gets he gets a lot of criticism from some people in Hollywood, not everybody, but some people. And do you think even though he did change his name, I don't want to be a Coppola, I want to be Nicolas Cage, and I want to be my own person. Being a Coppola has come back to haunt him in Hollywood a little bit. Don't, oh, well, yeah, well, he's a Coppola, so that's why he's so successful. I don't find that to be true at all. He did it all on his own, I think. Yeah, and, th- and that's why he changed his name is because he didn't, He really didn't want people to know that he was Francis Ford Coppola's nephew. He wanted to, he wanted to go to auditions and be able to impress, you know, casting directors with his talent and with his character and, and and not have people dismissing him as, you know, just a nepotism case. So I think, you know, I think he did build a career for himself on his own. He, you know, he, he also, he did work with his uncle Francis early on. He, Mm-hmm. Acted in three of Francis's movies, um, Rumblefish, Cotton Club, Peggy Sue got married, and that gave him a bit of a boost early on. But he hasn't worked with Francis ever since Peggy Sue got married. He's, you know, he's been, he's really broken out and established himself as as an actor. You know, as very much, um, very much an actor in his own unique category. It's really interesting. Zach, you spend a lot of time around, you know, pretty big name actors. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed a lot of movie stars over the years. I mean, the, the reason I ask you that is because because of doing this show, they've come into, I mean, everybody from Peter Falk to Jane Fonda and what, have come into the studio to do shows. And they're a, they're a different, there's no question. If you're good at that, and I would say that Peter Falk and Jane Fonda and Nicolas Cage would be, uh, they are a different kind of person. You could pick up this vibe. It's kind of like, they're not like me. You know, it's kind of that deal. Right, right. And, you know, I mean, Nicolas Cage has lived a very eccentric and flamboyant lifestyle. Yes. On the, on screen and off. And that's part of what I, what I find so interesting about him is he almost seems to live his daily life like he's in a Nicolas Cage movie. You know what I mean? No, I know exactly. I think, you know, that's a great way to put it, Zach. We're kind of to him all in the Nicolas Cage movie with him. I like that take. Yeah. I mean, mean, when he bought those rare dinosaur skulls from Mongolia or, you know, when he was, when he was a young man in his twenties, he, when he first made it big as an actor, he had a whole aquarium in his apartment and he had, he had sharks swimming around in like a shark tank in his apartment. I mean, He's, he's, he's a strange individual. I mean, he's lived a very eccentric life. Did you get to sit down face to face with him for this? No, actually, no. He, he declined to participate in the book. So um, yeah. I ended up viewing a lot of other people who worked with a lot of like famous directors and actors who worked with him early in his career on some of these big movies. Like I interviewed David Lynch about Wild at Heart. And yeah. I interviewed John Patrick Shamsley, the writer of Moonstruck. And I interviewed Matthew Modine about what it was like to star opposite Nicolas Cage and Birdie. You know, in a way, Zach, I bet you were kind of like, I kind of like the fact that he won't take the, the take part in this book because that is Nicolas Cage. He just doesn't do that kind of thing. Yeah, he definitely wants to preserve some mystique around his life and persona. Um, you know, it would have been a different book had he participated, but because he didn't participate, I had, you know, total freedom to, to write what I wanted to write and to mm-hmm. pursue the angles that I wanted to pursue, um, and to talk to, to a lot of his collaborators. So I interviewed more than a hundred people for this book, pe- people who knew him and worked with him firsthand. And so, you know, there are a lot of stories in the book. Um, from Cage's collaborators, you know, stories that haven't been published before. You know, Zach, I know we only have you for one more minute, but I will tell you that what you just said there, show, I wouldn't say that you're exactly a moron either, Zach. You're a pretty sharp guy, don't you think? Thank you. I'd, I'd like to think so. <laughs> no, I, I just, because you understood. I don't want to take part in the book. Yeah, I understand that. And you made the best of it. It's, uh, I wish a lot, a lot more... I guess news anchors and writers would have an understanding like you have. It's like, that's who Nicholas Cage is. I have no problem with that. And in my opinion, it made the book even better to tell you the truth. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think it, I think I worked around his participation and I, I interviewed a lot of interesting people and that definitely added a lot to the book. 
We look forward to the next time we get to talk to you, Zach. Thank you so much for your time this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Zach Schoenfeld, ladies and gentlemen, how Coppola became Cage. See, I like people that understand that is who Nicolas Cage is. Don't get mad at him. Don't be upset. Don't be disappointed. The book is better because he said, no, I don't want to take part in it. You I know, think, I, I love so. that. Because if you can talk to enough people that are close to him, you can get the gist of the same stories, but you don't have to worry about writing it in a way that isn't going to potentially make Nicolas Cage upset or anything like that. You'd be, I think, a little bit more right forward with it. Yeah, because if you're if you're working directly with him on the book, you almost, like you said, Tevin, you have that like obligation to almost like make sure everything is yep. greenlit by mm-hmm. him before you publish yep. it. If he says no, and maybe that was his thing, not just like no, I don't want to do it. It's just I want you to write something that you feel is genuine about me if you're yep. going to do it. Um, so having to go and talk to everybody else and all this stuff, then you can make the story and make the book exactly how you want and how like i'm sure zach had a had a goal to, when he set out when he initially started and i'm guessing by going around nicholas cage to talk to all these other people and get these stories and get these insights it probably enhanced the the book so much so um i mean i love nick cage i didn't know this book existed i plan on looking into it yeah there you go that's a very good take on it. yeah i i thought zach handled that interview very very well i love the fact that he understood when nicholas cage said no i don't want to take part he kind of handed him the freedom he needed to do, to write the book whichever way he wanted to uh, i love that stuff instead of can you imagine some of these hollywood stars that do sit in and help write a book oh you forgot about that wonderful thing i did over here when i was great <laughs> yeah it's got to be hard to do that yeah yeah right. Yeah, I feel like if anything, if I was a, you know, a Hollywood star and somebody was like, oh, I'm going to write a book about you, call me when it's over and I'm not going to read it or anything, but I'll tell you my side of the story that you can add to it or something like that rather yeah. than being involved every step of the way. Yeah, after the book is written, you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, so now you can go in and make your editorial if you want to add something that I said into it, but I think it's more authentic when you get uh, other people's opinions of Nick Cage rather than just him going on a diatribe about himself. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to guess the number is four, but then I'm going to ask you guys, how many times has Nicolas Cage been married? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that boy gets married. I feel like I never see him in any <laughs> scandals or anything about his personal life. At all. Not so, scandals, really, but he does like to get married and divorced. I know that. Oh, yeah. yeah he's one, two, three, four, five. Five. <laughs> and he's first, how old? Um. <laughs> Prefer, the first one he uh, married Patricia Arquette in '95 yeah. until '01, yep. and then uh, Lisa Marie Presley '02 to '04 <laughs> because he's obsessed with Elvis. Oh he's yes, obsessed he is obsessed with Elvis. So everyone was like, "That's weird." Now you're married to like, do you like his daughter? Do you not? I remember that. Uh, the longest one was Alice Kim from '04 to '16, and then a very short stint with Erica <laughs> Kolke from. That didn't make it out of 2019, so that was a less than 12 month endeavor. And then he's currently married. It looks like to Rico Shibata, who I don't know anything about. Rico Shibata, I don't know that name either. Does anybody know who that is? No. Uh, she's known for Prisoners of the Ghost Land, which came out in 2021, and she's been. Uh, they have one child together now. So congratulations to oh, that's that's Nick and nice. uh, Rico. Got a little boy, little girl. Does it say? It does not. Yeah, uh, probably August, was. August, August, Fran- August, Francesca Coppola Cage. So you use your intuition to figure out. And Coppola he's young. Cage. Did did he legal? He must have then legally changed his name to Cage. It's not just he just goes by it, right? Maybe. Yeah, that that's probably yeah, you make your baby take your stage name. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that I have something in common with Nicolas Cage from what you just read. What's that? Because he's Italian, Mm -hmm. and August, you said, is the name of his child. Yes. Mm -hmm. My two uncles, great uncle and an uncle named August, were both murdered by Italians. So we got something in common. What do you think of that action? Small world. Yeah. True story, by the way. I'm not making that up. That's a true story. They were both murdered. Oh, well, there is a rabbit hole um, (laughs) you can go down about her age. They don't oh, really? have it confirmed, oh, but they oh. think she's 27 and he's 57. But it's not like trying to find out her age is, is a little more complex than you'd think. Did you bring that up to upset me? 
Yeah. Because everywhere we go, okay, there, Catherine, isn't he a lot older than you? Yeah, shut up. Leave me alone. 30 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, eight. he also has a older son. Um, oh. I'm trying to see who his, uh, with Christina Fulton, who I don't even know who that is, but he mm -hmm. is uh, 32, 32, named Weston Cage. So, so his new wife, thinking. his new wife is younger than his, than his son. Than, oh. uh, It'll happen, you know. Will it though? <laughs> Will it? You really? Yeah, I. I'm sorry, I couldn't. Uh, Catherine's eight years younger than me, and that's probably about the outside, right there. There's no question. Yeah, married. Hey, look, if you're married to somebody 30 years younger than you, you kids get along. Good for you. We're not, for you know, you. criticizing everybody. I just don't think I could do it. Yeah, you know that's I mean? where I'm at, where I go, I don't want to hang out with somebody like, so in my case, I would be hanging out with a 67 year old. Like if I was showed up to a <laughs> dinner with you guys and I rolled in with a, with a man who's almost Tom's age, you guys would have feelings about it. Like get that bag, <laughs> but you, he could be after my money. You don't that's know true. that. That's so true. He had to throw me under the bus by, you know, oh, I'd be almost as old as Tom then. I don't mean okay. that in a bad way. I just You're mean a like horrible human being. Uh, you You're are dad like, a dad adjacent. You're dad like. If Alex brought a 65 year old man to dinner, That'd be weird. Yes. It'd that'd be, be weird. Very, very weird. Yes. That'd be. And again, if you're in that boat and you're married to somebody 30 years, old, good for you. As long as it works for you, works for me. Right. Yeah. Yep. That's all I'm saying. That, that, that makes total sense, doesn't it? It's fine. Do what you want. But also, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't going to let it go. I knew there's no way you were just going to let that go. No question about it. But, you know, that's a whole different. Yeah, it's so funny about that. He was married, what did you say, five times? Yeah, yep. five. Catherine and I have been married. We've been together for 43 years. It'll, we'll be married 40 years in on January, or excuse me, July 7th. And it's so weird to me to figure out what goes so wrong. Cause I mean, Catherine probably have a different opinion, but I don't think we were ever close to ever getting divorced. Now, maybe she did. I'm not real sure about that, but that's got to be tough going through all those. Like if you, if your first marriage, which you thought was the greatest thing that ever happened to you doesn't end well, don't that make you a little jittery about going on to number two, three, four, and five? Yeah, yeah. that's my thought. Is at some point you yeah. gotta start pumping the brakes and not just marrying every woman <laughs> that you guys date. People, yeah, people are in love with being in love sometimes. I'm not the type. Like, I think if something happened with me and Justin, I if I wasn't raising a kid with somebody, I don't ever see myself getting remarried. That just would never, but some people love it and and yeah. people have great successful second marriages. I'm just kind of the type yeah. that would be like, yeah, I I don't like being married is one of those things where you go, it's 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 just not in my mind a necessary thing to do twice. That's all. Right. I don't know who this would be, but I got to believe it's registered somewhere. Who is it? A man or a woman doesn't matter. Who is the American who's been married the most times of anyone? Because it's got to be in double digits, don't you think? It's got to oh be 10. God. Don't you think? But I do need, if AJ's going to look it up, but I do need your help, Tom, and I don't know how to ask this. Okay, here we go. Okay, so you know how we we learned a lot about the Golden Bachelor before it went down? It was a 71-year-old man. Um, oh. And they're going to make, they want to do another one because it went so well. Okay. And there's a big claim that there's not a lot of available hot men or older, hot, single men that want to be on it. Mm -hmm. And I started an argument with somebody and I said, I bet you I could find an like somebody around 60 to 80 mm -hmm. single guy who's attractive. But the problem I'm running into is I'm sounding like a prostitute at the um, Lifetime uh, gym whenever I ask like, hey, are you a single <laughs> older guy? <laughs> And I can't seem to really meet and greet in those circles. What I need you to do is just give me a name of an attractive 60 to 80 year old man in your life that you know who is single. Now, is he related to the guy who just won the Golden Bachelor? Is he related to Chef Fema? Because that's not a very she, common name. That, no, that's the female. And she she was uh, an ex-wife of his. 
Oh, the woman's name is FEMA. Yes, she was the runner up here in Minneapolis. Yeah, yeah. Leslie. Didn't, and I thought you say the Golden Bachelor went over so well. Wasn't he living some sort of sing, like a secret life where he had a girlfriend the whole time? No, he didn't have a girlfriend the whole time. He uh, was definitely like lied about that he'd never like kissed or been with anybody. He had a girlfriend after his ex wife or his, 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 um, his wife died. Mm hmm. He had a girlfriend. Yeah, she died. And that's why, like, he was looking for love. And he was claiming that he hasn't done anything. And then there was, like, a a few women who came out that said they dated. So, yeah. No, I'm not a big fan of Gary. He definitely lied. He definitely was produced. And he, yeah. like, went along with it. But he didn't have a girlfriend at the time that he was looking in on The Bachelor. Oh. So what was his name? Gary what? Um, I'm Gary Turner. I want to say Gary. Burditzman. Gary Burditzman. That's exactly. Turner. It is Turner. Oh, Gary Turner. Yeah. And where is he from? Indiana. I thought he was from here. No, that Les- they, they grab from- people from all over the U.S. Leslie's from here. Oh. Speaking of Indiana, the gentleman who holds the record for most monogamous marriage is also from Indiana. Yep. Uh oh. Glenn Wolf. He's allegedly uh, had the largest number of monogamous marriages at 31 separate Holy times. <laughs> 31 separate times, 19 children amongst those marriages. The real question in the game, ladies and gentlemen, is how many of those ended because of his wife's death? Oh, Oh, no. 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 Oh, no. I'm going 19. 19 out of 31 because of a death? I was going to say two is enough to be weirded out. No, I'm going to say for sure double digits. Brittany is the closest. Four. Four marriages. Four out of 31. Yes. His first one lasted a year, ended in uh, Mar- Marcy McDonald's death. And Jesus. then. Uh, cause Char- of death. What's the cause of death? Doesn't say, just says her death. Um, Charlotte Devane, two years of a marriage ended with her death. Jesus. Uh, Vivian Alvers actually lasted three years, also ended with her death. So it's one, two, three. One year, two years, three years. And kind then- of a pattern. There's um the last one. This one wasn't a confirmed marriage, but they technically counted as ending because of her death. So, but 31 marriages is wild. And how many marriages until you stop having weddings where you invite family? And yeah, I'm not going to just for how many marriages end as a family member would you stop going to this guy's weddings? Yeah, right. It's just it's just in his Christmas card every year. Right. Like, hey, I'm married again, by the way. Yeah. Unless, like, Glenn's marriages become a tradition. Then I'd be in. And, like, every time there's like, a different theme I wear. Like, if it becomes my holiday tradition is to go to Glenn's wedding. Okay. You know, i got to be honest with you. I think AJ and Tevin and I look pretty bad in this situation. Because this guy met 31 women who wanted to marry him. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's got to be a world record, isn't it? Yeah, that's impressive. Oh, uh, we. Jesus. The other, one, we, the other one I didn't mention was Frances Hunter. Didn't even make it a year. Just they married, and then a couple months later, she died. <laughs> she died? She just died. I don't know um, how many oh, but yeah. women died. I yeah. say we quit the podcast and we commit our lives to this true crime podcast about Glenn. What's his last name? Uh, uh, Glenn Wolf. Is it Glenn or Glenn? It's G-L-Y-N-N. So you, he's also known as Scotty, if that helps. Scotty Wolf. Glenn he's trying to hide something. <laughs> Like, what are you doing, sir? Getting married all these times. He was an American Baptist minister. So was he just doing it himself? Oh, maybe. (laughs) He's just like tricking it. Just say say I do right now. Please say I do. (laughs) I'm telling you, we got to we got to track this. I, you know, I like we should do that on this show. We should see if we can line somebody up for their 30 second marriage. What do you think? (laughs) It's going to mean something. It's going to it's going to be special. We'll probably at this point has more in attendance. This way than any way else. <laughs> and you'd never guess it by the number of times he's been married, but Glenn, he believes in true love. Love it. He just, you know, he's out also there. Also, has person. an insane amount of toasters. I promise you that he has a lot of toasters. Probably well, true. Yeah. Probably true. So, how is he still alive? No, he passed in 1997, oh, it looks like. Oh, okay. So, he, and how old was he when he died? He was 88. No, that can't, be, that can't be right. Sorry. I wonder who he left his fortune to like fortune? Did he pick, i don't know did like did he pick one of the wives like wife number 27 yeah he okay. was assuming that he has any money left after that many divorces is wild the paperwork alone 
would bury you. That it's, would be tough. One of his 19 children right. get a check in the mail for like three dollars and 45 cents. Hey, my inheritance. He actually just <laughs> saved like a word document with the divorce papers in it and just changed out the names. <laughs> <He's got it. laughs> oh, that's really funny. What is it called? Uh, like a a like, boilerplate, right? Yeah, a boilerplate for boiler yeah. plate divorce. Yeah, I did 31 times. I've been married once. He's married 31. Don't you forget, like you roll over in bed. Hey, Elizabeth, give me a, well, my name's not Elizabeth. I mean, wouldn't you forget? There is a slight asterisk here because uh -oh. there are 28 were fully confirmed. Three of them were not ever fully confirmed in terms of like they saw paperwork. It was oh, just okay. going off word alone. Oh, okay. That being said, if you got to 28, I'll take your word on the so other three. Right. It's yeah. like police throwing on an extra case on a murder, like a serial killer. Like, yeah, confirmed seven, suspected of eight. Yeah. Just throw it on there. <laughs> and he was a minister, you said? He was a Baptist minister from you guys. The what? LA Times wrote an article about him, Tom. Ooh. It is beautiful. I'm just going to read this line, one line. He married teenagers and grandmothers, farm girls and drug addicts, vir virgins and prostitutes, preachers and thieves, taking and shedding partners as casually as a square dancer. <laughs> <laughs> that is poetry. That is poetry. It is poetry. You're right. That's a great. So he literally just, well, what is it, Tuesday? Okay, well, I better get married. That is hilarious. 31 times. And somewhere there's somebody out there going, I can't even find a date. Right. And this guy's got 31 <laughs> wives. Like, Save some for the rest of us, buddy. Right. Is there, a, is there a picture of him at any point in his life? Doesn't matter how old he is. Is there a picture of him? Uh, yeah. yeah. I'll see if I can get one up here quick. Give me oh, one. God. We got it. Now, Brittany, you be the judge. Would you marry this man? Okay. Is all we're saying. Do you know what age you're going to put up? How old he was? Ah, uh, I have no idea. Not a not a clue. Not a clue. I wonder what some young ones on there. He's not a terrible looking guy. I wonder mm -hmm. if what category I'd fall into: virgin or prostitute, grandma or. <laughs> <laughs> None of those so far. Right, well, after <laughs> you've been you looking for old men at Lifetime, they're probably more aiming oh. towards the uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I gotta find. Uh, I'm on a whole bet. I, I promise okay. by Friday Here, I can a find a hot thing. single old man. There Here's a go. picture of him with one of his uh, one of his 31 lovely wives. Okay, here we go. No, he looks familiar. Yeah, you know, like his wife. His wife has a very pretty smile. His I wife will... is hotter than me for sure, but I'm still not doing it. <laughs> but he looks familiar. Well, who does he look like? Maybe he just looks like somebody. He looks would... like in the oh. old movies, the town drunk. <laughs> I was gonna say he looks like the mayor of some small town. Yep. Like, yeah. Like yep. in uh, Back to the Future type, he looks like a character from an old scene in Back to the Future. He's his posture is not doing his uh, chin any justice. He's, he's no, lacking a true. chin in this situation. He really is swallowing his chin. Like I have a question for you: Would he get married at the library? What the hell is <laughs> that? So she this this is um this is him at forty seven. No, no way. <gasps> he is not forty seven. Yes, <laughs> 47 in this picture. This is bride number 13, uh, looks, Sherry, age 20. He looks like he's 80 years old in this he picture. Does. There's no way he's wait. Fun fact Sherry was also bride number 11. <laughs> what she came back to the honey pot, <laughs> came back to the honey pot, ladies and gentlemen. I love it. Oh my, oh my god. god. Tom, I want to know so much more. Like, I say we dedicate an hour every week. To Glenn, we should. Wolf, Wolf, whose other wives were teenagers, said uh, their remarriage resulted from listening to evangelist Billy Graham, who recently spoke at a convention center. They were married on December seventh. So this picture is from December eighth, when he was forty-seven and she was twenty. Wife uh, eleven and thirteen, coincidentally. She's only twenty. She's only twenty in this picture. Yes. Oh, she looks a lot. Of, she looks like she's about thirty-five. I mean, she's an attractive woman. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying she looks haggard yeah, or anything. I wouldn't have thought she was 20 either. I wouldn't have No, that. no way. All right, you crazy bastard. Rest in peace. That's all I got to say. Right? Yeah. 37. He looked terrible. <laughs> <laughs> he looked horrible. That's what, that's what a lot of the horse tells you at seven. Yeah. I, I want to know what Glenn's got. And if you don't know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn I think back in, what's about. going on with Glenn? Okay. Why do no. women coming back to him? Here's the best part of this. We can hold on to that picture and go, 
Oh, yeah? You think it's hard to be married to a woman? Well, look what happened to this guy after marrying 11 women. He looks like he's about 80. Yeah. What, 47? You said the 37. He was 47 in that picture. 47. I agree with Devin. He looks like he's about 80 years old. In that yeah. Picture. It's wild. Oh. One more time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> he pops it up again. There it is. Uh, All right. We got to take a break here, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back in a couple of minutes right up to this. This is the Tom Bernard Show. Listen live at TomBernardShow.com or on the Tom Bernard Show app. This is Bob Sansevier, and I want to tell you about Dave Bialki from Bialki Law. Dave represented my wife, Mary, when she had a significant workplace injury. She was very happy with the job Dave did. If you have a work-related injury and have Dave represent you, I'm betting you'll be happy too. Dave is a down-to-earth guy. He grew up in northern Minnesota, rides a Harley, and worked various jobs doing concrete, electrical, plumbing, roofing, and carpentry work. Dave works for people with work-related injuries. If you work construction, or anywhere for that matter, and you're hurt or even just hurting, you should talk to Dave. Let's face it, our bodies wear out. If your body is worn out from work, if your knees or back or shoulders hurt from things you do at work, do what Mary did. Call Dave and talk to him about it at Bialki Law to set up a free initial conversation consultation the number to call is 763-571-2410 that's 763-571-2410 or visit bialkilaw.com that's b-i-a-l-k-e law.com tom here and i want to discuss a partnership that has been wonderful in my life zero res carpet care very good friends of mine nothing is better to someone with a family than having a completely clean home your carpet is the biggest filter in your house if you want to talk about pet dander or foot traffic dirt from the outside they all eventually reside in your carpet. So, Zero Res Carpet Care. Listen, around the holidays, you need to contact ZeroResMinnesota.com or call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. That's 952-Zero-Res. They clean your home with their electrolyzed pH elevated water that doesn't use chemicals or soaps that smell like a janitor's closet like other cleaning services. How about a Tom Bernard deal? Well, here it is. Get three rooms, zero resified, starting at 129 bucks, and don't forget your air ducts. Mention me, and they'll discount your air vents by 75 bucks too. This is for the entire month, so call them right now, 9520-RES, backward or forward, it spells the same, or book online, zeroresminnesota.com. If it's available, ask for them to come to your place in the Tom Bernard name service truck. What an honor that was, by the way. Just mention me by name and get the special deal to get your home clean and your heart happy. Zero res carpet. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful. Someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you, Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions. And Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. Do yourself a favor and call Josh now for a no obligation, 48 minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That is 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did and tell him his, hmm, his guy, Tom sent you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Guys, if you want to reignite your intimacy once and for all, listen. Just give Twin Cities Premier Health a call for a discreet and confidential in-office evaluation by their highly trained staff of medical professionals. Acoustic wave therapy sessions are 25 to 30 minute treatments with no pain, no downtime afterward. And right now, Twin Cities Premier Health is offering a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. Receive this $800 value when you use code word TOM at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. You may know that age-related erectile dysfunction is most commonly caused by a buildup of plaque in the arteries that supply blood to the erectile tissue. Acoustic wave therapy can rescue your relationship and has been clinically proven to break up plaque. Definitely take advantage of this limited time special offer. Receive a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. This is a savings of $800 when you use code word Tom at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. Be sure to use promo code Tom so we get credit for sending you. I wouldn't recommend a service like this unless I knew they could help you. TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. We will find it out. And you know what? I- this is what I love about life. We just spent the last half hour talking about a guy who's been married 31 times, Andy. 31 times, okay? This is pretty interesting because I, I just looked on the complete sheet. They give us really good stories and all the rest of it. 
this story in the if the person you're with texts and says can we talk today brace yourself you're more likely now pay attention this is a guy that's been married what 31 times and four of them died right Mm -hmm. you're more likely to get dumped today than any other day of the year how what a coincidence that is Mm. wouldn't you say i wonder why before Christmas, I guess it's like you don't want to oh. ruin Christmas, but you want it to be over by Christmas. Yeah, you don't want to invite or have them meet a bunch of family. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we're f- thirteen days away from. Well, Christmas is is uh, two weeks from today, right? Yep, fourteen yep. days. So if you go back two weeks, you're just a couple of days short of getting to Thanksgiving, are you not? That sounds yeah. about right. So right between Thanksgiving and Christmas, Mm -hmm. you get dumped. Yeah, it does make sense. It's yeah, you want it over by the new year, but you basically do it as far from the holidays as possible. And I'm sure too, if like Thanksgiving is the first time your significant other meets your family, and now they don't like them, you're like, wow, I gotta rip the band. Oh yeah, that's true. Christmas. Also, right in the middle of Hanukkah. So that oh, that's true. In the middle of Hanukkah today too, or Mm -hmm. this weekend. My but my no lamp has no oil left. I'm sorry. Indeed, that's the way it is. You know, I found out years later, and Brittany, you'll love this. Um, Catherine and I had been married, but we got married uh, 1984, and this was about 10 years later. We went over to her parents' house, Don and Betty, who I ended up being really good friends with. But Betty that day, Tom, I want you to know something. Don and I have been talking quite a bit lately. Uh, and uh, we really, really love having you in the family. It's great having you around. The first four years, we couldn't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> love an honest queen. Love Isn't that. that. I mean, it's like, oh, okay. Four years is a long time to wait to come around <laughs> it is. to somebody. <laughs> That's how long it takes to fall in love with Tom. Just four years, four short right. years. At that point, it doesn't feel like they came around. It's just like they just accepted it. Like, yeah. This is- well, well how so four years what year would that have been that would have been 1988 you were two years old uh, and alex would have been born about a year later they liked you once you uh started giving them grandkids yeah oh maybe mm. that might be true you might be right about grandkid. it's all true okay so uh december 11th was dubbed breakup day back in 2008 after someone analyzed facebook status updates and found a ton of people break up exactly exactly two weeks before christmas today it also found there uh, tend to be more breakups on mondays in general so the 11th is a double whammy this year experts think there are a few reasons for it the holidays are stressful what you guys were just talking about Yep. You might uh, be having second thoughts about the person meeting your family and a surprising number of us will break up just to, uh, to get out of buying someone. To... You break up with someone so you don't have to buy him a gift. That is chintzy, man. Well, then you, I mean, clearly you didn't care in the first place. If you're going to. Yeah. Right. It's right. like, oh, I don't want to spend 50 bucks on you. Yeah. Turning the calendar also represents a fresh start for a lot of people. So if things aren't going well, it may feel like a natural time to cut your losses and move on. I still think you're right, though, whether it's a Hanukkah or Kwanzaa or Christmas or whatever. You get to the end of the year. The year is coming to an end. We're coming up on a very important holiday. Uh, let's break it off. You yep. think that's that's accurate? Yeah. I would guess, anyway. The day of the year you're least likely to get. Do you have any idea what the least likely to get dumped is what day of the year? Fourth of July. Uh, yeah, it's probably yeah. on, yeah, or yeah, 4th of July or yeah. on Christmas, maybe, or something like that. The answer is Christmas Day. Yeah. You guys were both right. It was a major holiday. You have to be a pretty big piece of crap to break up with someone on Christmas, I think. <laughs> or, yeah. Because <laughs> like, with dead. enough activities, it can wait. Like, it can wait. You can hold up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But same with the 4th of July. You're celebrating the nation's uh, yeah. birthday, the holiday, and all the rest of it. I would so bet 4th just- of July has got to be pretty low on the list as well. Yeah, probably true. Uh, Don't assume you're safe if you make it to the 25th, though. A poll found some of us avoid breakups this time of the year, so we're not alone for the holidays. But on the 26th, breakups will start trending up before peaking again in March. I could see that because if you brought your significant other home and it didn't go well um, or the family didn't like them, Mm -hmm. it's like a countdown, right? Until like you're probably not going to make it long. There's some big blow up 
argument over politics or something and now yeah. you're like, ah, oh, we gotta. Or if your live-in boyfriend buys you the wrong size shoe, even though you live with him and he should have just checked your hundreds of shoes you had. Thank you. Thank you, people. <laughs> this sounds like you're talking from experience. No, no. I was just using an shoes. example of a man who you live with bought you a whole size shoe wrong because he didn't have, he was too lazy to just walk into your own closet. But no, nothing personal. Mm -hmm. Nothing's fine. What about the fact that half of shoes, the size is just a completely random number they pick? Right. Yeah, but like I have consistently one size throughout. It's a lazy move, Andy. I'm not mm -hmm. asking for much in life, but like, can you just, they're, they're, my shoes are everywhere. Pick one up and look at it. So Andy, you knew Grandma Toots. How old were you when, when she died again? You were a teenager? Uh, 20-ish. Uh, yeah, right around 20 years old. And she died in what, 19... I mean, no. not 19, 2004. 2000, like, yeah, four or five. So, yeah, it would have been 18, 19. 18, 19 years old. Somewhere around there. Brittany and Tevin, my mother, who had this voice like this, by the way, they can't forget that part. I'm sitting at her house, so I, I bring Catherine over there, introduce her to Catherine, to my mother. My mother meets Catherine. So I go back over to see my mother about a week later, and she goes, Tom, let me ask you a question. I said, yeah, mom, what's that? Well, that girl you brought over here. I said, Catherine. She goes, yeah, yeah, Catherine. What is it with you? And I said, what do you mean? She goes, why do all your girlfriends have to be so pretty? I'm like, I'm sorry for not bringing some hag over here. Why would she ask me that? I don't know. Isn't that a weird thing to ask? Mm, insecurity, it sounds like. Oh, you know, my like, mother's part or mine. <laughs> well, I don't know if you have like I don't. I've never met any of the other girls that you dated before you got married, Tom. But if they were all kind of of the same ilk, maybe they were all supermodels. You know, like you well, know, right. no, you like it's a weird. Or she thought you were ugly and was like, "Hey, why well, it's a possibility you get all of these girls to?" <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe she noticed you had a type and was just curious. I'm very charming. I'd like to point that out. You know. To yeah. throw that at but no she was she was often wondered that like it was a burden you know to 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 be to be with a pretty girl was a burden i think to her Does that oh, makes sense I see. Like oh, the yeah. song says never make a pretty woman your wife if you want to be happy that's for the rest of your, your life. life that's true i never even thought of that and you're right mm -hmm. Jimmy so she's not the only one who thinks that way Oh, I guess. We just got to be used to getting ignored or, you know, everybody notices Catherine first and then it's like, oh, and Tom's here, by the way, as well. Oh, that's a given. That always happens to this day. There's no question about that. She's well, she's a very charming human being, don't you think, Brett? I agree. I mean, I'm not going to argue. And I don't I, if we have to like rate hotness, I guess we can on a scale one to ten, but it's going to get weird. No, you don't want to do that. Matter of fact, we'll change the subject. Yeah, we'll skip that. That's so why you just wear a propeller hat everywhere. Then everyone will notice you first. Good it's call. Good call. No matter or, what. Or the worst is if you're, I'm assuming, walking Jude, and then people go, oh, my gosh, the puppy. And then, oh, my gosh, Catherine, you look so great, too. And then, oh, hey, Tom. Oh, Tom's here. Yeah, good. Good, good, Tom. You, you came along. Well, did you? Gonna notice Jude first. Yeah. Do that. This is one of the ugliest things I have ever seen uh, a juvenile and an adult suffered life-threatening injuries when a truck ran into a buggy at St. Mary's County on the Sunday, the sheriff's office said. This is Washington State. Is that where that is? St. Mary's County? I think Saint so. St. Mary's, uh, Maryland, it looks like. Oh, it's Maryland. Oh, oh so this is Washington, D.C. they're talking about then. Mm -hmm. that, that close. But uh, the crash yes. happened just before noon at Point Lookout Road and Pincushion. You get hit by a buggy on Pincushion Road. In the road. Very sad. Uh, in the intersection of Leonardtown, Maryland, the uh, St. Mary's County Sheriff's Office said uh, Mechanicsville Volunteer Fire Department also agreed. According to a preliminary investigation, the juvenile victim was driving the buggy carrying three family members. The buggy was standing still at the intersection when the horse unexpectedly reared and bucked. This action caused the buggy to enter uh, Point Lookout Road or was subsequently struck by a southbound 2021 Toyota Tundra. Oh, that's a, that's that a big, a big truck. truck. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that is not. It's that's one of terrible. the biggest, yeah, consumer grade trucks there is, I believe. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It ain't a pretty sight, I will tell you that. Oh. And none of them died. The horse died. 
Oh, yeah, well, horse died, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. it's the horse's <laughs> fault, so you had it coming. That's true. The horse caused the whole problem in the first place. But it's interesting. There was an infant in there, and the infant survived a buggy being hit by a Toyota Tundra. That's why. It's either a very good buggy, or I don't know. Those brakes must have been really powerful on that truck. Is that is that an Amish thing? And are there a lot of Amish people in Maryland? Yeah. It looks like an Amish buggy to me. Yeah, it most does. most of the time, if you see a horse and buggy, it's going to be, I would say, probably an Amish. Actually, I'm looking at a picture of the buggy, and it's in pretty good shape. Yeah, it looks almost like the horse is the one that got mainly hit, I and think, the buggy probably yeah, after. Yeah, exactly. Afterwards. I think yeah. basically the horse got, yeah. Because, if, yeah, if the truck would have went through the buggy, it would have been no, there would be no more buggy. The, no, there would not. Yeah. Could that be something else? So you go, hey, listen, Bill, I know you're going over to Jim's house and you're driving your car. We're going to take the buggy. So we'll see you in about five hours. Yeah. I mean, honest to God, taking a buggy everywhere has got to take some time. Yeah. Mm hmm. I what don't think they go much above maybe 20 miles an hour tops. That's what I'm thinking. That's yeah. what I'm thinking, 20 miles an hour. No, that's, that's got to be about it, don't you think? That's yeah. Much faster than that. I wouldn't think so, but that's so sad that the horse rears and the horse ends up in the one struck by the by the tundra. And and most of the time, the communities that the Amish or well, anybody that's driving a buggy lives in is very rural, so it's not like it's a big city. And so the people that are driving kind of know – you know, okay, don't speed past the horse, don't honk your horn, and people are you know, right about it. But yeah, every once in a while, you'll get the horse because they're not used to whatever big machine and they'll get mm -hmm. spooked, and now you take off. Yeah, it makes total sense. Oh my God. I... Okay. There was a service worker stabbed over uh, quality of the food. Well, maybe the food was really bad. Yeah, but. Let me tell you where they went and got their food. I'm not saying it was, you know, horrendous or anything like that. Uh, the worker stabbed over food quality at Panda Express. Really? Yeah, you're going to need to lower your expectations at some fast cash. I've heard Panda Express is not so good. All right, it's like, fine. I'm, was it's your fine. mall food court food not top yeah, notch? Like, like, just know well, you're I mean, going to be thirsty for like two days straight. It's yeah, not all salt. salt. It's fine. Are we, are we talking like, you know, the rice wasn't quite al dente enough? Or yeah. you know, that yeah. was like there was a wig in my food? Because, <laughs> and, you know, I can see reaching for the knife at that point. I have never been to Panda Express, is it, so it's not that great. I don't think I've ever actually had uh -huh. it. Think it's of your favorite Chinese food you've ever had, Tom, and then yeah. reduce the quality to like a two. <laughs> Yeah, like it's fine. It's like oh, it's like the saltiest, gooey mm -hmm. sugar, like on top of chicken. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Like my nanny kids loved it, and I, every oh, yeah, time we'd I have it, sure. I'd be like, you know, every like fourth time, I'm like, I guess I'll get something too, and then I regret it because I was so. I'd wake mm -hmm. up at like two a.m. being like, "What?" Are you always regret it? Yeah, yeah. And, well, I people suppose. have been freaking out at workers recently. There was an article last week where a woman was at Chipotle and her Chipotle bowl was made wrong. And so she threw it back oh, at the right. manager. Mm -hmm. And the, the good thing about that story though, was the judge, instead yeah. of doing sending her to jail, made her work like 20 hours a week at a Chipotle. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Which I love. I agree with you. I love that. Well, remake really? the bowl yeah. 1000 times. Yep. Yeah. Let's see how well you do making it. Yeah. Right? And and Tom, that's kind of on her because you walk along with them and tell them what to put in them. So it's like, if you're not a good communicator, that's on you. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, it's so like Subway, it. basically. It's, oh. it's Mexican Subway, more yeah. or less. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. Oh, this story, this was a very, very sad story. Minnesota man arrested after impaling a grocery worker with a golf club. <gasps> it was a it was a wasn't club? It? What kind of golf club is? Yeah. Well, he, snapped, he snapped off the uh, one end of it, so it was very sharp. <gasps> oh, well. Yeah, Minneapolis police are investigating a stabbing that left a grocery store employee dead. Police arrived at a grocery store. Oh, that's right, Catherine. It was on Loring Park. That grocery mm -hmm. store has been there forever. You have to remember, I played in Loring Park when I was three, four, five years old. I was in, in there every day because we lived one half a block away. I hate that that, that stuff happens around Loring Park. I have mm -hmm. such great memories as a, a little kid. Oak Street Grocery? 
<clears throat> Oak Street Grocery. Place, yeah. The local business, 66-year-old man, was found behind the counter with a golf club impaled through his torso. Went through his torso? Jesus. Uh, well, that's what an impalement is. Yeah, but I mean, that goes into your torso, but this went through him. Now, impalement is going through. It's Stabbing going through. is going partially. Oh, that's right. That's right. You uh, impale. It comes out the other end. Get your terminology right. Yeah, Jesus. you're right. You're damn right. First responders gave the man immediate medical aid. Police said, and he was transported to Hennepin County Medical Center, but he died at the hospital, unfortunately. What? When you go into a grocery store, what is so important? You have to stab someone with a golf club. Well, that sort of thing makes me think it was personal. Personal. Already knew the guy. That's a pretty personal way to kill someone. Or the person that did is some sort of mental illness, potentially. Or yeah, he was just insane. But the fact that he 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 must have brought a golf club with him. (laughs) Yeah, because they don't have them there. So yeah. it suggests that he brought a weapon with him for this express purpose. Yeah. I think grocery right. stores don't sell golf clubs as far as I know. No. And I can't imagine something happening in the grocery store that would make me mad enough to want to stab somebody. Right. Well, there you go. In a news conference late Friday, police chief Brian O'Hara said that the suspect appeared to have collected some items from the store, taken them to the counter, according to the Associated Press. It appears he then went behind the counter and began to assault and bludgeon the individual behind the counter in a very grotesque way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, blood, it would be very grotesque to be bludgeoned. Police said that a witness gave the officers information that led them to a nearby apartment unit where the suspect had barricaded himself inside. A standoff ensued. The responders, including uh, negotiators in the Minneapolis Police Department's bomb squad, arrived at the scene. After nearly six hours, a man was arrested without incident. My God, suspect is 44. 44-year-old guy stabs a 66-year-old guy to death with a golf club, impales him with a golf club. Mm-hmm. What would get you that upset? Or is the guy just nuts, do you think? He's got to be. Because yeah. one of the two. Yeah. It's like what you, we, you were out of, you know, frosted flakes. I'm going to beat you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, I don't know. There's no logical explanation for that. No, there's nothing. But I mean, honest to God, yeah, that's Loring Park. You leave it alone. See, now, you know what that did to me? Just saying Loring Park. I was, mm-hmm. I think, about five years old when I tried to do the, what's the, 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 they used to call them the monkey bars, I remember back in the day. Yep. So you go up the ladder and you go from one end to the other, and then you come to go down the ladder. Those yep. are still called monkey bars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Last I've checked. Five years old, Tommy. I'm at Loring Park. I'm gonna do the monkey bars for the first time. I lasted about three rungs and fell right on my head. Oh uh, well, that did not feel good. I will tell you that. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. All these years later, it's because I jammed my head into the ground trying to go across the monkey bars. What do you think? Yeah, it could be. Lauren Park. What's wrong with me? I always think about. Oh, there was a guy I was dating for like one and a half dates, maybe, because Uh-oh. he lived in Loring Park and didn't want to ever move his car so then i would try to go there and the parking there is horrendous and i remember oh, we yeah. were supposed to have a second yeah. date and i was like i can't find a spot and i don't think we're that into each other and he's like oh okay and i just drove away and went home <laughs> <laughs> that's a good call that was terrible oh i don't even i the guy's probably not still even around but there was a guy that parked over by loring park every day and he had the greatest license plate for loring park i've ever seen I never met the guy. I have no idea who he is, but as, I didn't even know if it was a Minnesota license plate or not. But his license plate said, "I see you are twelve." I see you are twelve. That's creepy. I see you. I see you are one too. Oh, <laughs> I was thinking it's like he's seeing twelve-year-olds at the park. No, no, hey. thank God. Yeah, that's what I had too. I was a little mm-hmm. thrown off. How great off. is that though? That's I see you cool. are one too. That's uh, that's very clever. It's a whole you, sentence in six characters, right? Yeah, exactly. That's not. That, I mean, that's that's some. That's a very uppity attitude that the guy's got. I don't even know if it's still around. That was probably thirty-five years ago, so I don't even know if the guy's still around. But I very clever, sir or ma'am. Could have been a woman. Yeah, Wherever you are. I I remember it was in Woodbury by my parents' old house, and I got cut off by this guy in this really intense sports car, and I got mm-hmm. really pissed. And his license plate said that guy, and I was like, "Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're that guy." And like now I'm less mad because at least you know you're that guy. 
Okay, let's. You guys must have your favorite license plate that you've ever seen because that was one of mine, but I got another one too. Do you guys have a favorite license plate you've ever seen? I want to hear yours, Tom. Not that comes to the top of my head. Well, we saw, uh, oh, what the hell was it? Oh, um, the other day we saw a yellow Nissan Juke. Wait, Love. Ago, right? Yes. Yeah. Yellow Nissan Juke, bright yellow with a picture of Pikachu in the back. And the license plate said Pika Juke. That's Pika really Juke. cute. Well, it is cute, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Love that. And I used to have a Juke and I love these. Oh, there Jukes. you go. One of those cars that no one knows exists. Nope. Yeah, fine with it. True. You got one, Devin? Um, I don't have. I always roll my eyes at people with their, like, I don't remember. Their any fancy I'm, I'm plates. like, really, like, you... Or like a lot of the Teslas will have like gas, mm -hmm. LOL. Yeah. Or yeah. Things. yeah. Like yeah. those always kind of made me chuckle. But I I think it takes a specific type of person to yeah. have a personalized license plate and it makes me roll my eyes. You gotta get motivated. Yeah. yeah you sure. have a reason, I think. If you guys saw this, would you break the windows out of the vehicle? This is what I want to know. You ready? Yes. It's about 30 years ago. So I'm like, nah, it must have been long. I, I don't remember. I, I think the kids, you guys, you kids were really, really young. And we took a vacation to Florida, go down to Florida. And <clears throat> we're driving down the freeway, I-95. And there is a beautiful brand new Rolls Royce in front of us. This car was probably a million two, something like that. It was like the very, very, very top end of Rolls Royces. Mm -hmm. And that's not an unsurprising sight in West Palm Beach, by the way. No, it actually Palm Beach is. Island, especially. They're yeah, a lot of, but this is very, very, very expensive uh, Rolls Royce. And his license plate said, my toy. Oh, that's pretty oh. gross. Wouldn't you bust out the windows if you got a chance? <laughs> oh, then you'd be on the hook for like five hundred thousand dollars. I can't afford that kind of violence. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. You I'm get sure sued. one window is like fifty grand to replace in that thing. I wouldn't doubt it. I suppose we better take a break here because uh, we got Kristen Burt coming up in a couple of minutes, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say. I would say that. We'll be right back right after this. This is the Tom Bernard Show. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You have all helped support MyPillow and their employees in these tough economic times. Mike Lindell knows this and continues to give back to listeners with great deals on his most popular products. Right now, you can save 50% on Queen and King pillows and the original My Slippers, and the MyPillow six pack bath towel sets are back in stock. The proprietary technology makes them extremely absorbent, yet still provides that soft feel you look for in a towel. Set comes with two bath towels, two hand towels, and two washcloths. Regular price is $79.98. And for a limited time, you can get this six pack towel set for only $39.99 with promo code TOM. That's a 50% savings. So go to mypillow.com, use promo code TOM to save 50% on the MyPillow six pack towel sets. That is just $39.99 for a set. This deal will not last long. Enter promo code TOM for this special and many more. Jim Paul of Valley Buick GMC has a mutiny on his hands. His sales crew said they've had it brooming snow off the new Buicks and GMCs, then warm them up, move them to plow, and repark them again. He even overheard them cooking up an alternative plan. 
a sale. <laughs> this is crazy. Why don't we just mark them down and sell them? This is getting real old to be out on that lot in this sub-zero weather. That's right. Everyone we sell is one less to broom. I heard we're supposed to get six more inches tomorrow. I'm 5'6". How am I supposed to get the snow off the roof of a pickup? I'm Jim Paul, and, well, car dealers do have all kinds of crazy sales. This idea probably makes more sense than most. There's plenty of inventory, so, okay, the crew has decided. Yeah! yeah that's that's all all so then it's official. The We Don't Want to Broom Snow Sale is in full force at Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings. Snowy inventory priced real right at valleycardealers.com. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Kristen Burt joins us now. $1.2 million Rolls Royce out there in Los Angeles. And it says her toy, not my toy, but her. <laughs> Did you hear that story, Kristen? Uh, that sounds like about every other car in my neighborhood. So <laughs> that's well. my coffee bean, uh, which is right across the street from Starbucks, of course. Every Sunday morning at about 10 a.m., there is a meeting of these like four guys and they all own like Ferraris and like Rolls and Bentleys and they all like park with their car like right in front of like where they sit outside to have their yeah. coffee every Sunday morning and they have done this for like a decade and I it's just so funny to see them every single week and it's just like one of the scenes of your neighborhood any any good plates on those cars that you've noticed personalized plates um, I haven't noticed, but now I'm going to check next Sunday. <laughs> oh, you because uh, you know that all four or five of them do have something on. The, they don't just have a license plate. No, you've got to have that vanity plate. I mean, otherwise, you know, why have the Ferrari? Right. I've never had a vanity plate. You guys ever had a vanity plate? I never had. No. no. I don't care. want to give the government more of my money. <laughs> well, that's true. Plus, I'll get people that. to break up the windows in your car anyway because you have smart ass plates i guess i don't know well, yeah, plates not really that much anymore i don't know which is a vanity plate i don't even know i think this is probably like 100 bucks or something like that maybe. yeah that's like nothing compared to the cost of a car I know california there's... also sells like their old plates like our plates now are like white background with blue lettering but mm -hmm. if you want the classic blue background with the yellow lettering you can also pay extra for that I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. Blue with the yellow. Absolutely. Yeah. No question about it. Uh, uh, $10 oh, filing fee, $11 annual renewal fee. Yeah, there that's we go. it. Uh, yeah. Apparently it's not a whole lot. Hmm. It's not, not bad. And that in Minnesota? Uh, yes, apparently. Huh? That's Look at that. very affordable. I, yeah, I always thought it was like a couple hundred bucks. Which still isn't that much, but it's like, you know. It's so weird. I'm, they either charge you a gazillion dollars or they charge you like a nominal fee. It never makes any sense to me. I know. Yeah, it is yeah. that's true. <laughs> when my yeah, husband and I got married, too, like we paid for um, with a, just a private, like just so that our marriage license wasn't just like out there on the Internet mm -hmm. and you have it privatized. And it was only ten dollars more. And I'm like, why doesn't everyone do that? That's a good question. And I have a. I got, I, I'm very, very happy about this because I'm a Bosch legacy guy anyway. I love that show. Um, season two is probably not as good as season one, but it's still enjoyable, no question. Did you ever watch that show, Chris? No, I just know that Bill worked on it. <laughs> oh, that's right. Bill worked on it. That's right. But uh, we'll tell Bill if it was his idea, I wanted to thank him because when I worked at Capitol Records back in the day, I used to go, I would guess, three times a week to Musso and Frank's. I yes. love that restaurant and that it's very prominent in, in uh, Bosch legacy. They go to Musso and Frank's. What a great, I, I told you my Catherine story, didn't I? I don't going think to Musso so. and Frank's. This is like 42 years ago or something like that. I meet this young one. So she's 22 at the time. And <laughs> I take her to Musso and Frank's and I said, this is my favorite place to go and blah, blah, blah. And it's, you're going to love this and all the rest of it. So she ordered lobster. 
But apparently she didn't pay attention to which lobster she ordered because the lobster came out and it weighed almost 10 pounds. Oh, and that's not good. No, it's not. We were handing it out to people as much as we... I can't remember, but this is 42 years ago, and I still think that thing was like $1,000. Wow. I mean, I mean, think about it, a lobster that big at a restaurant. My God. And it's God. not that good. Like, I, no, it's not. Listen, I'm a lobster expert growing up in Maine. Sure. I just want to tell you, do not order anything larger than two and a half pounds. If you yep. think you need more lobster meat than that, just order a second, mm-hmm. like, two-pound yep. lobster, and you will You're be right. so much happier because it will be delicious. This thing covered the entire table, for Christ's sake. I had nowhere to put my food because that thing covered the entire table. Oh. It was unbelievable. I just, I'm thinking about like how tough and chewy it probably was. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's not I'm worried about really me. Sad to talk about about that. Buck. You're worried about the lobster for her, but I cough up for you. You're not worried about me. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, at that important. size, they probably like slow cook it or something, I would imagine, to improve it. Or can you I, slow cook lobster? You just steam them. Hmm. You want to steam them. That's the yeah, best they have way. To a serve special lobster. way to make. 50 pound lobster and it's just I sad because you put them in alive Still. i did get a call about two weeks later from the uh, accountant at the Capitol records tower going what the hell is this did they make <laughs> you pay for it or is it nope. okay no i was i was one of their oh. one of their good boys that brought them a lot of business so they just left me alone oh that's good it was wonderful yeah, Bill said it was fun to shoot in Muso Franks. We were actually just talking about that the other day. Oh, uh, God, they're be- that, right? they're definitely known for their drinks and their atmosphere. They're not really yeah. known for their food, but it is a no, if you true. go there, it's a really fun place just to have that like classic old Hollywood vibe. So I'd say like go for maybe like a little appetizer, a drink, take some photos, and then get out of there. Go to dinner somewhere else. It's what about two blocks from the from the Capitol Records Tower, if I remember correctly. Yeah, right around there. Pantages Theater is also right yeah, around there. Yep, so it's a good pre-theater yep. spot to hit. God, what a great well, I love that job. Too bad the record business went under. Oh, the music business is so tough. And uh, you know, it's why everybody's selling the music library. I know we talked about yeah, you know Hall yep. and Oates on Friday, but that's the way they're gonna make all their money, or they have to go out on a very lengthy tour. Mm-hmm. In order to make that money now, because you just you just don't make it from selling records anymore. No, not from selling records. Those two guys do not exactly get along all that well, anyway. No, they never did, even in their heydays. So, never. and their music is so good. I like am obsessed I with Hall and Oates, and it makes me really sad that <laughs> they don't get along. But you know what? Sometimes that's the genius in it. Like their weird chemistry sometimes makes magic artistically. Oh, I think that's true. I don't think there's any. Hey, when I was at Capitol Records, we had the Beach Boys on Capitol. And by the way, Brian Wilson, one of the nicest, most gen- gentle men you'd ever want to meet. What a sweetheart of a guy. But for a while there, because he had gone. Remember, he sat in a sandbox at his house writing music. He, mm-hmm. he put a piano in a sandbox and wrote music in there. And they had such a tough time with that. They had five different dressing rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's no different with Aerosmith, Joe Perry, Steven no, Tyler. Yeah. They hate each yep. other, and they're so good together. <laughs> when I saw them at the Hollywood Bowl, I was like, this is electric. And we're talking yeah. about, I think, like 2014 that I saw them, and they were unbelievable. Yeah, isn't that great? It's a great band. Those are all great bands. I love those people. They're, they're magnificent, no question. So we were asking this question this morning, um, and I went with, uh, I think, a Murder in Venice the uh the um oh, what the hell's his name the guy who started Kenneth Branagh. The- Kenneth Branagh. Yeah, Kenneth Branagh. I love him. He's wonderful. I don't know why I forgot his name, but what is the best movie of the past year for you, Chris? And is there one movie that really st- stuck out to you? Ooh. It's tough. It's a tough call. I'd say it was a tough year. It was a tough year for movies, I think. It was because yeah. you know, we have Golden Globe nominations today. And it's gonna. This is these two movies are gonna wind up being at the top of the of the list for at least Oscars and everything else. And it was Barbie and Oppenheimer. And yeah. Oppenheimer wasn't it wasn't tops for me. I'm not a huge Christopher Nolan fan. Right. Um, but Barbie to me, even though I don't think it was like the best movie, I think it's the movie that um, inspired at least for me the most discussion amongst my friends. And I think that at least is the sign of a solid movie where yeah. we have a lot to talk about. 
I mean, are there any, there's not one movie that really jumps out of you going, oh yeah, that was the best movie of the year. I don't really have one. I saw Oppenheimer. I thought it was too long. It was three hours long. Uh, this new movie that just came out, this, you know, three and a half hours long. Enough with the long movie. Because they will not let them. I think you told us that in a couple of markets, they tried to break it up with an intermission. And then Hollywood got back to them and said, you can't do that. No, you will be fine. It is part of your legal agreement as a a theater operator. You have to show it as the director intended. Um, So if you break it up with an intermission, that is actually going against that contract, which I think is ridiculous. And I, I I would love to see that director. That's like, I'm building in an intermission. And I think that if you're doing that three hour movie and you're building in an intermission, I have a feeling theater owners will totally embrace it because they're thinking, merchandise mm-hmm. sales if you're super smart yep. um you're thinking snack sales of course for people that just have that bathroom break built in you're like what a relief i i just think people are going to be really happy about it and i i dare someone to do it in 2024 do you think the movies will continue to be three three and a half hours long like this it's so weird to me because if yeah. you take a look if any director bothered to look at the fan interaction on social media People are exhausted by three-hour movies. They're just yes. like, it's too long. I'm not enjoying it. And yeah. now I'm waiting. I'm not going to the movie theater. I'm just going to wait till it's on streaming so I can cut it up in my own time. So I would really love someone to just really think outside the box on this and do it. And do they understand most people right now don't leave their house? They don't go to the movie theater, which I love going to the movie theater, but there are st- I mean, you you compare movies to TV 30 years ago and movies to TV now. I'm sorry, but TV is just kicking ass with all the great shows. Uh, These direct these producers, directors, they're they're hurting themselves by doing this. These three and a half hour movies. If I want to do that, I'll just sit at home and I'll wait till it comes out and I'll sit at home and watch it because I'm not going to a movie theater for three and a half hours. Well, you know what I think is interesting is that creatives in the industry, and I'm really talking about the people who are on camera, have been forced to be everything. You're forced to be able to like be marketing your career with social Mm -hmm. media and also be, you know, creating work and also be (laughs) just out there acting. You have to be doing everything. You know, for me as a journalist, I have to write and I have to be able to produce and edit. I have to be able to do it all and write. And it's kind of crazy um, to me that... um, directors haven't been forced to take a look and go, how can I market my film the best way possible? I want this to be three hours because I think that's how I'm going to tell my story. But maybe I'm going to do this by inserting, um, uh, you know, an intermission. And I'm also going to think of ideas of like how I can work with theater owners to get people to buy tickets. And maybe we'll do something fun at intermission. So it'll get people to the concession stand or get people to buy a t-shirt. Cause I'm going to sell t-shirts. I don't know, but there's going to be someone out there. That's finally the marketing genius that goes, this is what's going to get people to the movie theater. And Mattel did it great this, this summer with Barbie. People mm-hmm. came out in droves. People came dressed out, mm-hmm. be making an event. Taylor Swift did it. Um, Beyonce did it. But if you don't create something special, people are not going to come anymore. What is the name of the, the series about the Godfather? That was so good talking about all these issues. What was the name of that series again? Oh, yeah. Oh, Last yeah. Is that some weird name that is crazy? growing up Gotti, or did I make that up? No, it's a different that one. Was that was the Netflix. Is, um, yeah. There's been so many mob name. things this the year. Offer. The yeah. author. There you go. The yes. author. Mm-hmm. That taught me so much about Hollywood and the inside Hollywood and how all this stuff happens. And everybody thinks, oh my God. Because they had a tough time at first even making that movie. They didn't want to make that movie at all. It turned up maybe the greatest movie of all time. To me, it is. I know that. But all the things they had to go through, uh, it's not that easy to make a movie, obviously. It's not. And it's harder now because we are having a contraction in the industry when it comes to finances. So there's mm-hmm. less investment dollars available. The bu- the budgets are going to be smaller um, for actors. Again, all of those fabulous like $20 million per picture and like the back end deal <laughs> profits, those are yeah. gone. Yep. So everybody's going to have to think outside the box and go, how do we get this movie made? How do I make money as an actor? How do I make money as a director? And that's going to come in different ways. And that's when you're going to see just people like 
Ryan Reynolds, uh, George Clooney, all of these people mm -hmm. that have decided to create different types of empires for themselves. That's how they're making their fortune. And mm -hmm. if they're smart, you know, if you're someone who has a brand like Ryan Reynolds, you can slide in your aviation gin into a movie and, you know, create a cross <laughs> yes. promotion, yes. your mint mobile, whatever it is. But that's the way it's going to be, unfortunately. Is there an average price of how much it costs like to, to make a two hour movie now? It's got to be a fortune. I mean, for a small, like, and I'm talking about like a small indie budget these days mm -hmm. without studio backing, $5 million. Oh, God. It's so much money because of marketing costs and everything else. But if you're looking at like, let's just say a normal, like hour and a half horror film, those are typically small budget with studio backing. Mm -hmm. You're looking at like $30 million. $30 million. 30 million with marketing costs and everything else. Oh it's it's astonishing. So it's really hard, but there, you know, there's been a lot of discussion of like, does Disney need to make a $200 million movie these days? Right. Because they're right. not making that money back anymore. Um, and I think this is why we've seen that re-release of some of the Pixar movies that they're going to do with like soul and turning red coming up in early 2024, they're like, how right. can we make a little additional revenue on something we didn't make back initially? Are they going to cut back on how you make it? I mean, I, I'm hoping they'll leave the movies alone and just shorten them or whatever, rather than cheapening up the movie in itself to try to make budget. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, th I think we're going to see, unfortunately, I think we're going to see smaller casts overall yep. too. That's going to be drive the way. And you know, AI is here. I mean, are they going to sit there and, and add more, like use less extras, add a little bit more CGI, AI people in the crowd? That kind of becomes a problem too. You know what I kind of love about that whole idea? This is my evil brain kicking into high gear. Wouldn't it be great if you were making a movie and you could use AI and you pick somebody you hated as a kid and make one of the characters look just like them? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that's going to be happening. Oh, I guarantee it hasn't it. already been done because I have a feeling everyone has that one bully in their background. Mm, yeah. <laughs> there he is. Them. And he gets not a dime for his visage appearing on screen. He gets nothing to be made fun of the entire, or actually probably hated the entire movie. But I bet you that is happening more and more, isn't it? It probably is. Or that like ex who scorned you. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> That'd be part of it too. Any good <laughs> stuff on, on the docket coming out in the next, you know, we're th this is a huge movie season, obviously, right? Yeah, this is. I mean, right now, it, everything's all about Wonka. So Wonka is right. the big. And surprisingly, which is so weird, the Golden Globes came out today. And, you know, everyone thought that Wonka would make it into, like, the best musical and comedy category. And it got completely ignored, even though it's had some pretty good reviews. And instead, they put in May, December, a drama <laughs> with Natalie Portman. And oh, really? Yes, into the comedy and musical category. And I'm like, how is May, December a musical? No, for sure. Or a comedy? Definitely not. Because even the subject matter based off of Mary Kay Letourneau really isn't funny. Yeah, I mean, that, and that's the whole deal. It's the Mary Kay. And she died how long ago? Um, I think in 2020 she passed away. Oh, so about three about years ago. Three years ago, yeah. God. And how's your husband putting up with the fact that they're making movies about her? You know, it's it's like loosely based. So I don't think he had any oh. input. I'm going to bet that Netflix right now or Hulu is working hard on a documentary or docuseries on it because they're going to want to capitalize on this, especially in the run up toward the Oscars, because you've got Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore in that. So is your husband out of his teens yet? He is. <laughs> he is. His kids are in their 20s. So really? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Oh, I mean, time is like flown. Yeah, that it's, I still don't understand how that all uh, I won't get into it, but how in the hell does that happen? That amazes me. I mean, talk about a failure of not only the justice system, because she got basically a slap on the wrist yeah, both times. Yeah. I mean, she did some jail time, don't get me wrong, but it's it's always I never understand when it comes to um, crimes, sexual crimes, any sort, 
why it is always a slap on the wrist. And she was allowed to obviously reoffend many times over. And then yeah, yeah. the Barbara Walters interview, when I, I, I said this to you guys, but America sent them like well wishes and like wedding presents after they got married. What is and wrong he, with us as a society? At that point, I mean, he I think he was probably in his very early 20s when he got oh, married. Oh, okay. So they were I mean, happy. He was an for adult, him. but at the same time, why are we? People are like, "This is a love story." I'm like, "No, this is not. This is a crime story." Because he was what 15 when she first started having sex with him. 13. 12. Yeah. Oh, 12. 12. They met when he was 12, and oh my God. I mean, because I think they say 13. I neither age is good. Let's just oh, put it that way. But no. he was I've a 12 year old in his in her classroom. I watched May December in the scene of the because the like essentially the actress that's going to play her in the movie is following them around to uh, learn about them. And she goes, well, how did you guys meet? And she's like trying to describe how they met without it mm. sounding completely heinous. And it's like, this is absolutely grotesque. We met he, during our study. makes it sound like he was the aggressor. And oh, I'm right. just, all yeah. air quotes for people that can't see mm. what I'm doing right now. Aggressor <laughs> in the relationship. Right. Um, and that is based off of an actual interview that happened between Mary Kay Letourneau and um, Billy Falau. And that is, they almost took it word for word in that particular scene. And when you go and watch the real life people do this, you're like, this is unbelievable. And even the interview at the time is like, wait, wait, what are you trying to say here? I mean, they're totally baffled. But again, this all sort of skated by America. And we're like, whatever. Yeah. Yep. I don't really understand that either. Now, I a question I do have the mother of her husband when he was 12. I mean, when did, when did people find out she was doing this? Oh, they knew because she got pregnant when he was about 13 and what, Mary what? Kay Letourneau, besides being a teacher also was married and had kids with another man mm -hmm. while this was all happening. Well, what did your 12, 13 year old son? What did the parents of that kid do when they found this out? If I'm correct, um, he, uh, Billy Falau's mother was a single mom and oh, at the okay. time initially loved that there was a teacher taking interest in him and mentoring him. Oh. Um, and, and this is unfortunate because there are great teachers out there who mentor students who need this. Um, but, you know, she's the one that sort of like spoils the whole situation for them. Oh, it's the guy. Hey, you want to have sex? No, Casey Jones is on right after that, baby. I mean, think about that. You have nothing in common. Nothing. No. I'm being sent a text message. Just to, just to uh, we'll yeah, change these yeah. a little bit back to the Golden Globes. I saw that they're having trouble finding a host. Is this just typical people turning down an award show or is there something more going on? There's something more. So first of all, Golden Globes over the last couple of years has been, has had a real tumultuous time. Um, it, it started in 2020 when it was revealed that all 87 members were just a bunch of white people nominating everyone. There was no diversity. So NBC. Well, the back one was good, you mean? Oh, you. Tom <laughs> jumps in just to say that. Tom is very lucky he's not in the studio because... <laughs> he might have gotten a little punch you get run <laughs> over um but nbc was like hey listen this is ridiculous it was la times that sort of exposed the what was happening behind the scenes mm -hmm. and nbc is like you have to get together you have to like figure this out your membership cannot look like this um so they sort of went back to the table and said it's fixed and of course it wasn't fixed and nbc was like mm, we're not going to broadcast anymore so they had to like stream online one year um, mm -hmm. And try to try and figure things out. So it's been one of those like odd situations. Like, do you attend the Golden Globes? Do you not attend the Golden Globes? Now, the Golden Globes, um, the actual organization, which is the Hollywood Foreign Press, dismantled and then came back together um, as just the Golden Globes. It's owned by Penske Media and Eldridge um, production companies. Um, I work for Penske just for clarity and, and <laughs> oh, <so laughs> you know, disclosure biased. and all that good stuff. Um, so they, yeah. Now they own it. But here's the thing. Is the Golden Globes going to be um, one of those situations where, like, I think people are hesitant to step back into it. Do you want to host the Golden Globes? Is this going to be a disaster? Because even this morning, nominations were supposed to start at 5 a.m. 
it was 517 and I'm like, where are they? And they're like, well, hold on. We're going to be there in a moment. They just had like this random like crew guy coming up every few minutes. <laughs> it was about to start, which feels like it's on brand for the Golden Globes. But a lot of people just don't want to be associated with a hot mess like the Golden Globes. Yeah, that amazing. Why did that happen? Well, um, it, you have, you know, when you have an organization that has a lot of power now, Hollywood Foreign Press, even going back before this sort of racial reckoning that they had had in 2020, mm -hmm. if you go back over the years, they used to allow their members to be bribed for votes. Um, so the Hollywood Foreign Press would be getting these like incredible trips to visit a set or like dinner with Tom Cruise. And you would be like, why did like, let's just, let me like throw something out there. I don't know. Like why didn't George Clooney win this award? Instead, Tom Cruise won it for like kind of a popcorn movie. Well, behind the scenes, they were whining and dining the members. Yeah. Um, and I can tell you as someone who votes for SAG and votes for the Emmys, we aren't allowed gifts over $25. Mm -hmm. So any gift that they give you is usually like, a chocolate bar or like they'll give you the screener or they'll give you like a little bit of like appetizers and a drink, but that's it. So, um, they, you know, you're not allowed to get these big elaborate gifts. Like they would get watches, they would get vacations. Like that doesn't exist. Anymore. Do they send those big elaborate gifts then to your mother and she accepts them on your behalf or <laughs> good question. I wish, I wish oftentimes now they don't even send them as a member. They don't send them to your house. Like if you go to the, for your consideration event, also known as FYC, that's when you will get the gift. So then it's even narrows it down to like, say 200 people went and saw a movie and a Q and a with the stars. And Hey, here is a cookie from Barbie. Well, it's not all bad. By the way, that noise you guys heard about five minutes ago coming through my microphone. Uh, my printer is about, Oh, I'd say a foot and a half from this microphone. Catherine uh, printed out some shipping information. Mm -hmm. Couldn't wait a couple more I minutes. Don't think it came through too badly. No, so I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. Yeah, I didn't hear oh, it either. Didn't really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should I show you the shipping information? I'm looking no. at it right now. We don't need, <laughs> really don't, we don't need your address. Now. Yeah. We don't need you doxxed. <laughs> Phil does that all the time. Like he will like, I'll be like filming something. And he'll be like, blah, 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 throughout the house. I'm like, perfect. <laughs> Good timing. I'm always on in the studio at this time, but I appreciate your noisiness. It all worked out. Oh, Alex just walked in, so that's good. What's going on, Alex? Oh, so much. Good I'll stuff? Film, uh, busy, busy things. Oh, because of Christmas season? Oh, God, I hate it. Well, You hate Christmas? He hates Christmas. I don't hate Christmas. I don't but know. That's what we heard yes. of that's Christmas what season. That's the headline of this artist. Either. That's this what we all she heard. Said, I hate and Christmas what I said. the whole Christmas yeah. season. No, one we, no, we don't know why. We don't quite know the reason. Yeah. Oh well. So it's a little tough, is it? <clears throat> oh my gosh. I can't. I, I might need a mental health day soon. And Are you in a situation where your kids want something that you can't possibly find because it was all sold out? Absolutely not. My kids get used stuff for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Ethan's not like going to be one of those kids who's like, don't care. No. oh, yeah, I got to get this uh, new yeah. toy that everyone has. Like, no. too bad. The bar is low. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where yeah. I like to keep it. So, so you too so, benefited, but your children can't. Is that what you're saying? They're benefiting just fine. They're getting a bunch of cool stuff. Okay. But they don't have. Well, the thing is, they don't watch commercials. Mm hmm. That helps a lot. Which helps a ton. Yeah, they don't see like the latest toy mm -hmm. and everybody needs it and look how fun this is. They don't it's see that. It's at school when it becomes a problem when every other kid has this new. But they can't bring toys to school. Oh, like at all? Mm -hmm. Oh, so like no so Tamagotchi good. or yo-yo craze nope. going on? Uh, they can't bring them to school. That's smart because, yep. yeah, I remember every kid had to have a Tamagotchi because yes. every kid had one. So if you didn't have one, you're the weirdo. Yeah. You know, it's. It, uh, recess everyone's trading pokemon you don't have pokemon you're the weirdo yeah i don't know how it is at other schools but at my kid's school you were not allowed to bring any toys uh, it's a not a bad role. idea at all does anybody have any idea what the hot toy is this year because there's always one really hot toy i have year. no idea I, mean, I feel like it always ends up being some nintendo and last year was well, uh, yeah it depends on the age the switch was a big one trying to get a switch 
The oh, Switch okay. came out like six years ago. I know, but I'm so I bought one in 2020 during all that, and then I sold mine for more money in 2020, wow. like two. Oh well, or 2021 like... maybe because I was like, I'm kind of over this, and then it was just so unavailable. People were yeah. like. Well, I think it was like 2021 when the PlayStation 5 came out. That was impossible to get. So people yep. would buy them and sell them for double what they're worth because yep. parents were scrambling to well, try and get one. And I mean, people like, I remember people wrestling at like Walmart for a Tickle Me Elmo yep. when we were kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And last oh, Friday yes. was brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so here are some of the top. Boys for 2023. Furby. How are That's the insane. Furbies back? Furby. Furbies, Furbies are coming back. Furbies are coming back. Yeah. Furbies are oh, back. Um, never liked Furby. Barbie Dreamhouse is back. No surprise. Makes sense. No, no. Um, fingerlings. They're cute baby monkeys for your finger. <laughs> oh, <Aww. sure>. right. <laughs> um, a bitchy interactive dog. Interactive pet. And sure. a doggy, oh, a robot of- dog for your whole family. Like an eyeball? I've heard of little live pets mm. from like, what does your kid want for their birthday? Because we were invited to the party and there's been a lot of little live pets. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. I'm going to go to five yeah, below. And it's a $10. lot of interactive Star Wars, Lola, animatronic droid, everything. Marvel's Spidey and his amazing friend, Web Spinner's playset. Little live pets, mama surprise. Guess what? It's she so had baby. Not a whole lot has changed in the last 30 no, years. Not at all. Else. Yeah, yep, yeah, plastic crap. That makes sounds. Mm-hmm. Creative Forge like, building kit. That's allowed in my house. So one of Ethan's favorite presents that we got him is um, we found a thirty-year-old glue gun and cut the cord off of it and gave it to him. Oh, I really <laughs> love that. Right <laughs> now, he runs around. He loves his glue. Oh, well, because he sees us use a glue gun. So right he wants now, Gogo's glue. favorite thing in the world is this haunted-looking doll that the neighbors had in that's their what? house. She like yeah. looks half naked and like definitely has like the soul of a tortured old man in him. Mm-hmm. And she carries it around and goes, baby, baby. Yeah, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. oh yeah. She loves this thing. Yeah. It's another haunt in your house. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, Chris. Uh, some things like that. Kristen Bird, another brilliant performance. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Don't I look like I'm about to read poetry today? Yeah, yeah. you do. I was just gonna... Yep. Well, there you have it. Thanks, Kristen. <laughs> See you all tomorrow. (laughs) See you tomorrow. We take a break. Be right back to wrap things up right after this. Holiday shopping season is happening right now, and you can save up to 70% off your shopping with the Tom Bernard Holiday Online Auction, December 8th through the 14th. Auction items include gift certificates at Grand Old Creamy. I love that place. Grand Old Creamery, baby. Gift certificates. Institute of Non-Destructive Testing Certification Program or Certificate Program. Free tuition for the training. What do you think of that? Institute of Non-Destructive Testing Certificate Program with the free tuition for the training and also OsteoStrong 12-month memberships. Visit TomBernardShow.com, enter keyword auction to view items and bid. That's TomBernardShow.com, keyword auction to be bidding. Oh, my God, the beginning ends December 14th. You know the song Kokomo? It's supposed to be off the Florida Keys, right? Hate to break your Beach Boys bubble, but that's a fictitious place they made up for the song. Fortunately for the rest of us, the Florida Keys island chain are as real as the taxes you have to pay in Minnesota if you're a resident. Now that's a reason to move south. In addition to Florida and all of Monroe County being beautiful, the Keys from Key Largo to Key West are even more beautiful. It's Tom Bernard, part-time Florida resident myself. And if you want a second house or a new retirement home or want to become a Floridian, may I suggest you contact Matt Carlson from One Key West Realty. Matt grew up in Litchfield. He's a super real estate agent when it comes to finding your tropical island space in the Keys. He lives there and here, and Matt knows what's best in Key West to buy. For your second home in Florida, Matt teamed up with fellow Minnesotan from Sartell and Alexandria, Kristen Eklund, who's one of the top mortgage brokers in the country from Coast Coast Mortgage. She'll get you the financing you need to buy a home in Florida or in Minnesota. Matt's part of the Lake Sotheby's International Realty Group here in Minnesota, and Kristen, his mortgage colleague, lives and works in the Keys, so they both know the Florida Keys' new and existing homes for sale and are Minnesotan through and through. Contact them by heading to onekeywest.com. That's onekeywest.com. Tom here, and 
I want to discuss a partnership that has been wonderful in my life, Zero Res Carpet Care. Very good friends of mine. Nothing is better for someone with a family than having a completely clean home. Your carpet is the biggest filter in your house. If you want to talk about pet dander or foot traffic, dirt from the outside, they all eventually reside in your carpet. So, Zero Res Carpet Care. Listen, around the holidays, you need to contact ZeroResMinnesota.com or call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z. That's 952-Zero-Res. They clean your home with their electrolyzed pH elevated water that doesn't use chemicals or soaps that smell like a janitor's closet like other cleaning services. How about a Tom Bernard deal? Well, here it is. Get three rooms, zero resified, starting at $129, and don't forget your air ducts. Mention me, and they'll discount your air vents by $75, bucks too. This is for the entire month, so call them right now, 9520-RES, backward or forward, it spells the same, or book online, zeroresminnesota.com. If it's available, ask for them to come to your place in the Tom Bernard named service truck. What an honor that was, by the way. Just mention me by name and get the special deal to get your home clean and your heart happy. What do you think of that action? All right, we just have a few minutes left to go here. Any important topics we should get to that I missed? Uh, we watched a show, a movie called Luck. Oh, I love that movie. Mm-hmm. Oh, what is it? What is it? A, so there's this unlucky girl, <clears throat> and there's a lucky cat, and she chases the lucky cat into the luck world where all the lucky creatures like leprechauns and unicorns <laughs> live. And then there's also the unlucky world, which is where all these like <clears throat> trolls and weird root creatures live. I don't know what those are. Dad, They're... you have seen this movie. So. Oh, okay. You've seen Luck. Yeah, we've watched it with the kids and mom. Well, okay then. At your there house. you go. It's very cute, and we all really liked it. Yeah, it was. Well, <laughs> it's it's a John Lasseter production, which makes sense then. Oh, so yeah. is it animated? Yeah. yeah. It's 3D. It's basically, it's a Pixar movie. No, the unicorn is real. But it's not Pixar. (laughs) Okay, that's a crazy thing to ask nowadays. We have a Barbie movie. It's not animated. No, they put out a casting call for trolls and got their their local bridge. found them. It's just a bunch of guys wearing very cheesy paper costumes. The unicorn's a horse with a Dorito on its head. head. Oh, (laughs) because the Chronicles of Narnia could do it, but Luck couldn't. I'd argue the Chronicles of say, Narnia was an animated I, movie. I would say that that's yeah, but it's also not. It's mixed media. Yeah. Hey, mm-hmm. hey. Ooh, mixed media. There you go. All right, I got to run something by you guys because I just saw this. I, I, I'm surprised I didn't see it earlier today. Jada Pinkett says the holy slap saved her marriage, and then they ask, "So who's the new bald chick Will's hanging out with? What do they mean by that?" Okay. And he has a new friend. There's a lot of layers. Like, yeah. I mean, she is bald because she had, didn't she have cancer or something? Alopecia. Oh, alopecia. That's what it was. That's right. Good. Thank God it wasn't cancer. So, do they really mean there is a new woman that's bald or they can't pick <laughs> Jada Pinkett out of a crowd? What is the yeah. if he's, so, he's really into bald ladies. He okay. apparently was leaving an event in Miami with somebody that looks a lot like Jada Pinkett Smith. Um, it doesn't appear that they have named her, but yes, he is seen with somebody that definitely is uh bald. He's so, bald ladies, but it's not Jada Pinkett Smith, it's somebody else. Yeah, that's what it says. Um, God, that's weird. Are they it's a mystery woman and she looks cute, so good for Will Smith. Are they separated? They no, should be if they're not. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah, like, there the was worst marriage I've of, ever seen. Yeah, like cheating with mm-hmm. your son's friend. Like, no, it was an open the, marriage. It's totally different. Yeah, and then yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I have a question. It's okay to do that if it's mm-hmm. open. Jada Pinkett Smith no longer sees the infamous Will Smith Oscar slap as a bad thing. In fact, she now calls it the holy slap because quote so many positive things came after it. Like what? Well, she got to sell a bunch of copies of her book. Yeah. Oh, oh, about I, bet money money off of it. I bet if you asked Will Smith if he thinks the slap was positive, I bet you he does not. Yeah. Uh, I would have to agree. Went in the toilet after that. Because he, he's lost a couple of movies or a few movies now, hasn't he? I don't know if he's been in a movie since, has he? Yeah. Yes, they like bombed. I oh, think. were they not so good? Yeah. He came out with one not too long ago. Um, Let's see here. And it wasn't that highly promoted because he was in it so i don't know how well it did um but it was a serious one Mm -hmm. and then um 
her book came out and they'd found out they'd actually been living pretty separate, even though they like mm-hmm. pretend to be yeah. married for years. And that was a big like Hollywood shock. And then he oh. actually had a book before that, that talked about how he would watch his dad hit his mom and he just regrets doing that. And I think it was just a culmination of that. And then everybody really attacking him for her having an affair and him looking kind of, I don't want to say a chump because it sounds like it's stereotypical roles. And then the slap kind of all came to the perfect, terrible situation. And then her book didn't sell very well. And she was Uh doing publicity for it last month. Hardcore. Uh, He was in Emancipation. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Which I don't know a, how well it did, but it's a kind not of not well. Yeah, the first time I'm hearing about it. Yeah, so. well, I mean, it was a pretty lazy attempt at like, oh, I'm not such a bad guy. Look, I hate slavery. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big join the club, take. buddy. Hot take. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, if all of this is true, then who's the new lady, Willsman? Because she does say it improved their marriage. It it saved their marriage. She said, obviously. So of- how bad was it before? Exactly. No, it, wasn't, it wasn't good. <laughs> so if all of this is true, then who's the new lady Will's been hanging out with? She's bald and black, just like another certain female in Will's life. And he's been spotted with her twice now, not just once, but twice. What do you think? Yeah. You know, some people have a type, right? Isn't that That's true? true. I'll say that good for Will like because she looks good. <laughs> she's, Hopefully she's not as crazy as yeah, that's, mm, that would be nice jada pinkett smith because she seems like they both, right. you, you just kind of go man everyone deserves happiness so like if it's not together yep. they both have enough resources where they can do that like go do that go be like. happy all right that's gonna do it we'll take a break be right back in a few minutes we'll kick off the family show right after this Guys, if you want to reignite your intimacy once and for all, listen. Just give Twin Cities Premier Health a call for a discreet and confidential in-office evaluation by their highly trained staff of medical professionals. Acoustic wave therapy sessions are 25 to 30 minute treatments with no pain, no downtime afterward. And right now, Twin Cities Premier Health is offering a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. Receive this $800 value when you use code word TOM at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. You may know that age-related erectile dysfunction is most commonly caused by a buildup of plaque in the arteries that supply blood to the erectile tissue. Acoustic wave therapy can rescue your relationship and has been clinically proven to break up plaque. Definitely take advantage of this limited-time special offer. Receive a free treatment and a free consultation when you book today. This is a savings of $800 when you use code word TOM at TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. Be sure to use promo code TOM so we get credit for sending you. I wouldn't recommend a service like this unless I knew they could help you. TwinCitiesPremierHealth.com. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. You need to know a guy for your auto repairs, legal issues, banking, and more. The same goes for investment advice. You need a guy to help you be successful, someone you can trust who gets results. Well, I got a guy for you, Josh Arnold. Josh gives you straight talk, not sugar-coated advice about your financial situation. Josh has seen it all when it comes to economic and market conditions, and Josh can make sure that your retirement objectives match your investments. 
do yourself a favor and call Josh now for a no obligation, 48 minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose and you'll get a different point of view for your investments. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That is 952-925-5608. You'll be glad that you did and tell him his, his guy, Tom sent you. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, a security investment advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road? or the child that followed. Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. <clears throat> Welcome to the family with Alex Bryant Bernard Rasmussen. Tevin Pittman. Andy Brandt Bernard. Brandt. You got to turn on your microphone. Uh, I got to turn on my microphone. There it is. Our host Catherine Brandt. <laughs> and voila. Kostaki Economopolis. Kostaki's with us. Yay, ladies and gentlemen. Kostaki, I want you to know something. I very wisely, in the last two weeks now, it is, I guess it's almost coming up on three weeks, I didn't watch the Viking Chicago game because I knew they wouldn't win it. And I did not watch one minute of last night's game, maybe the worst football game ever played. <laughs> I did see the stat. Uh, uh, let's see it. Here it is. Da, da, da. Where do we, where, where's my stat? It's the, it's, the, <laughs> my stat. it's the lowest scoring indoor game in NFL history. How about yeah, that? They were talking about it during the game and they were like, it's never <laughs> happened that since they added overtime that a game was zero to zero and we were this close. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. amazing about that. The only way that could be a lower scoring game is if someone scored a safety and nothing else. Right. Yeah, right. Two well, points. I'm pretty sure the score to the Vikings game was the same as the score to the Minnesota Wild game. <laughs> or just as many points as our hockey team. <laughs> That's terrible. Crushing it. No one could score. It was like Urkel on prom night, huh? Yeah. Oh, see. It was like a straight dude at an Indigo Girls show. Very little scoring. <laughs> the, Ra- the Raiders got shut out. Apparently, what doesn't happen in Vegas also stays in Vegas. You just have a zero. Not good, you know. I understand. Deep, <laughs> deep into the third quarter, the Vikings had negative total passing yards. Josh Dobbs is making me question how hard it really is to be a rocket scientist. I mean, it can't be. Yeah, can't exactly. Be you don't have to be that smart, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Jefferson's been out most of the year. He came back. He got hurt on the second play of the game. In the second play of the game, the Vikings were encouraged that it was only quote an internal chest injury. I'm not a doctor, but that sounds pretty serious. <laughs> The chest has got some important stuff in there. (laughs) Internal chest injury? Oh, my goodness. Kostaki, do they know how long he's going to be out this time? Uh, I haven't heard yet. It sounded like like the tone was like, oh, he didn't get a serious injury. But, you know, I don't don't know. Oh, that's good. I I know. know. Uh, Vikings offensive coordinator Wes Phillips arrested for DUI this week. But the the Mm -hmm. team still took him to Vegas, which... I believe they call doubling down. Uh, <laughs> yes. Your drinking's out of control. Let's talk about it at the casino bar. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I didn't even hear that story. That's kind of weird that I watched the news and all the rest of it. Yeah. And from where he got pulled over and what time it was, it was very likely that he was drinking at the practice facility, like in or around that area having a lot really having some office beers and got pulled over on the way home. Oh, 
Oh, no good. That's a weird choice. I, you know, I get, I mean, I get it. I've seen it my whole life. When I was, my first job was I worked construction in the neighborhood that my mom's house was in, you know, so I could work there before I could drive. Mm -hmm. And those guys, the roofers and the plumbers, and, you know, they would, they would work for like 10, 11 hours in the hot Georgia sun. And then they would all stand around the pickup truck and chug beers and throw the cans in the pickup and then drive home. Sure. I was like, you know, <clears throat> I, I get it. I understand the motivation, but man, especially in the NFL, you can just pick up the phone and get a free ride anywhere, always, no matter mm -hmm. what. Knock it off. Get your act together. You know. Couldn't agree. How bad was it? Was he pretty lit up? Uh, no, it was close. close. So it was like right at the legal limit. Yeah, it was close. Oh, and they still charged him. I yeah. The the number I heard was one. Oh, and it, it's point oh eight, and it was one. Oh. Yeah, but it, it was close. Yeah. Um, the Falcons are tied three ways atop the division. Uh oh. Six and seven, first place. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the worst division since long division. That's bad division. <laughs> what happened to NFL football? I mean, the Vikings <laughs> suck. Every, what happened? It does seem like there are more teams that are really just can't, you know, can't get it together than there right. usually are this year. It's a it's a three way tie. It's a bad three way. The Golden Girls would have a better three way. <laughs> oh, so. see, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, Tevin's leaving. She's <laughs> leaving early. I made Tevin imagine something he was uncomfortable uh, with. <laughs> I need that imagery. Yeah. Uh, but the big story, of course, this week, and again, we lost two more big-name quarterbacks, uh, C.J. Stroud and Justin Herbert. The NFL's gone through so many starting quarterbacks this season. It's like a whole league is the Browns. Nobody wants that. That's bad. Ooh. <clears throat> CBS should just have a new drama investigating quarterback injuries. NCIS QB. I like that. Or we could rename the season the last quarterback standing because whoever has a starting quarterback is going to win the Super Bowl. It's just like a matter of. Well, that would mean Kansas City then. That's all that's left, isn't it? One last whining quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't happy, that guy. Yeah, no. it, that guy, look, I'm sorry, but your your guy was definitely offsides. Half he was of offsides. <clears throat> he was offsides. There's no doubt about it. I know. Mahomes lost it on the sidelines of screaming at the refs. It must have sounded hilarious, right? It's like cutting off Kermit the Frog in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's a good comparison. <laughs> Here's a joke, Tom. I probably can't do any other place. Uh, but here it seems safe. I don't know. We'll see. I'm, we're ready. We're ready. <laughs> Mahomes is biracial, and yet he put the zebras on blast. Huh? Kevin? <laughs> I get it. Like zebra, black, I, white. I, I, I get, get it. it. You get it? You get it? It's a color joke. <laughs> it's a color joke. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Evan didn't faint, so I think we're okay. Yeah, I'm I'm triggered. <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> Mahomes is whiny, man. Actual Chiefs complained less about their losses back in the oh. day. <laughs> oh. Usually, when someone uh, in Kansas is complaining this loudly, yeah. it's because they're teaching evolution in a science class. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing on that one. That's a good uh, joke. I well, I, I don't know. I'm joke. just. Uh, I'm I don't. I don't know enough about Kansas to. Uh, they famously the fought there. against uh, the whole Darwinism. It's anyway. Yeah. I have a question for you before you move on. <laughs> Does Mahomes' wife ever shut up? Uh, no. My she's God! A, every time they're on camera, she's like, blah, 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 blah. like I, "Calm down." She seems a little. There's something about her that's a little off-putting to the outside viewer. I, will, I would have to I will, agree. I will chime in. Although I have to say, as a <laughs> as a Mahomes dynasty owner, you know, I'm interested in the guy keeping his head yeah. down and doing. I love that he's with one simple woman from the very beginning of time, and like mm -hmm. that's it. He's not out there going bananas and carousing and drinking and chasing girls and whatever. Um, I'm happy that he has a simple old fashioned setup. It's good. Well, his dad was a pitcher for the twins. His dad was a very nice guy. I only met him a few times, but he's a very nice guy. That's cool. I'm happy to hear that. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. He seems about. like he's got his head on straight. This, I think that's why this story is kind of interesting because it's not like him to completely go off the handle on something that again, to the outsider looks like, you know, he's, 
he's wrong. You know, it was clearly at offsides. I don't know. Yeah. The, the Cowboys look good. Uh, they might earn the right to get blown out in the playoffs by the Niners. Be good. <laughs> they might. <laughs> well, I just committed the biggest sin on earth, Kostaki. What's that? Jude is in, in the uh, studio with Catherine and me. Mm. And I am wearing the, the workout watch deal. Oh, yeah. And if it catches the Apple Watch, if it catches light, it'll reflect on the wall. He loses his mind. <laughs> going up. Oh, it's reflecting. He yeah. thinks it's like an animal or something crawling up the, the wall. <laughs> what he thinks. Yeah, he, he caused a scene this morning on Did his he? walk, too. Yes. Did he? He started barking at this old guy in a little rascal. <laughs> And he, uh, and he uh, had a dog, and so the dog came, you know, to defend his defense, owner yep. mm -hmm. and almost tipped the guy over off the little rascal. <laughs> okay. I was like, this dog does not do this stuff. What's going on? It was a scene. Mm. <laughs> what the hell was that? Just every every once in a while. Yeah, every, every once in a while, dogs are just like, I don't like you. Yeah, and for that, some reason. For some, like, every once in a while, somebody passes by yep. me on rollerblades. Not every time, but sometimes. And May is like, oh, yeah. you will die today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah, 10 he years. Really, he was kind of coming down a little ramp behind some a hedge. So oh, it might have just surprised, yeah. surprised him. Surprised him. Oh, yeah. But I mean, the guy almost toppled over and I was like, I, oh my God. I don't know if I should run or stay and help. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I had a seven pound poodle who hated skateboards. It was so random. Yeah. Daisy hates skateboards, oh, rollerblades, any sort of wheels. It's pretty, cool, <laughs> it's pretty inconvenient no around New York City. We would go for walks and calm, 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 calm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, out of the blue. <laughs> Uh, Jerry Jones has got no problem with the brotherly shove uh, because that's how he gets strippers in the limo. I'm just guessing. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> what's the brotherly shove? What is that? That's the tush push. That's the Eagles oh. thing where they line up. The oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. get a yard and a half. No matter what's going on. <laughs> are they on a quest to give it the worst names they possibly can? Yeah. Those are both pretty, which one sounds more like a gay bar. That's a fun game. Yeah. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those are both. Why not call it like the phalanx or something cool? <laughs> and, and Greek at that, right? I yeah, should have so. checked in with you. Mm -hmm. You should have. Next, next time you end, I mean, I, I do charge $5 million per term. I was going to say. They've they got it. So, you, you know. <laughs> they can uh, market it, turn it into t shirt money. They'll make it yeah, back in those. They'll, they'll make their money back easy <laughs> with the phalanx. There you go. Oh, well, that one's free. Jets Colts was also scoreless at the half. Vikings Raiders scoreless till the two minute warning. Oh, this Sunday had more zeros than a white pride rally. It's, it's a lot of it's a lot of zeros. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm trying to figure that one out. <laughs> it's a lot of zeros at the rally. A lot That's of best joke you've ever had. Gustavo. All right. <laughs> oh, here we go. I didn't laugh, but I liked it anyway. Making up for the zebra comedy earlier. <laughs> I have a question for zebra based you. humor. Doesn't work. Has there ever been a white person rally in the state of Minnesota? I've never heard. If At one time, one. when the Starbucks was going to close or something, and everybody <laughs> it was a big rally of white you know, people. Nah. Down during the pandemic. Yeah. Wow, our priorities are high. <laughs> I'm sure up north there have been rallies of yeah. six. Could be. Yeah, yeah not so a lot of people. Tens of people showed up for tens the rally. Of people, yes. the rally. Right. Yeah, that's how that's right. Derek Carr revealed he's broken three ribs this year. The good news for Carr, it can only happen 21 more times. Oh, ouch. Big Dom in Philly said, mmm, ribs. <laughs> Breaking a rib sounds horrible. It does. It sounds I've, like one of the worst things. I've popped yeah, it hurts ribs when you out breathe. of place yeah. before, and it's not fun. Mm. So can you breathe even with a broken rib? It'd be hard to breathe. I would imagine. It hurts. It feels yeah, it hurts like to breathe. That's a bad constant pneumonia mm. kind of, Ugh. and it can puncture the lung if yeah. it breaks wrong, which you yeah. don't want that. I just no, imagine. that sounds really bad. That sounds yeah, like an internal sneeze. chest injury. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sneezing is terrible. <laughs> Coughing's terrible. Well, I've like, oh, I remember I've, after I've never broken a rib, but I've popped a few out of place before, and it's like I had a I popped one out of place because like once you're pregnant sometimes your ribs are just like oh i just pop in and out of place now and i had a really mm -hmm. bad cough and i popped two out of place and it was like every time i would cough it was like horrid pain. yeah right after getting my gallbladder <laughs> surgery this one time a sneeze just came out of nowhere i didn't have time to brace or anything okay yeah that was uh 
felt very much like my insides were going to be outsides. Great. I feel like I should go find that old man so he can jo join the show. Yeah. <laughs> <bring him in>. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I need, I need this to uh, hover around to get around now. <laughs> totally fair. That's funny. A Jaguars employee is being investigated for stealing $22 million. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I'm just guessing here. Was it Urban Meyer? <laughs> okay. Why do you think you could steal $22 million? Like, yeah. steal $500,000 and beat it. What are you doing? What's a crazy... That's too much. You're, you're going to get caught. But yeah, if you're, you're going to steal, gonna... you steal either a small amount or you steal a ton and then you, like, go to some jungle in the middle of nowhere. You yes. go far. Those are, those are yes, two right. options, yes. basically. You don't stay there in the office continuing to skim. <laughs> They'll never right. know it's gone. Uh, despite having no experience, commentator Greg Olson has interest in the Carolina head coach position. I got two words for you, Greg. Jeff Saturday. Right. <laughs> no, wait a second. Who's, who's Jeff Olson or Greg Olson? Greg Olson was the uh, tight end for the Panthers for years and years, and he's oh, the, he's the Fox uh, commentator. I believe he's the color guy on Fox. He's really good, actually. He's a smart dude. Um, so why, why does he want to get out of that? To, he wants to coach. That's a good question. Every, I, I mean, I actually saw an interview with Jeff Saturday this week, and he was talking about how brutal the hours are in coaching. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like bet they, they don't. You know, those guys don't have dinner with their families. You know, no. they're just they're just gone for. They, they do like 70, 80 hour weeks. It's insane. They sleep at the place. It's, the expectations for the coaches are insane and preposterous. Um, I wouldn't, it doesn't sound like a job I would want to do, but I agree. People do. Uh, let's close on this one. The chargers lose more games than people lose chargers. Thank you. Thank you. Oh God. I'm just saying they've left a few games in the hotel room. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I understand. I understand it completely. Got some under the furniture. <laughs> no, because you're here and Alex is here and Andy's here. And Catherine is sitting right next to me. Here I am. I want either you or Tevin to tell everybody the highest new uh, contract ever signed by a baseball player. Oh, goodness. I know it's Otani, whatever his name is, right? Otani, it's seven hundred yep. million dollars over ten yep. years. <laughs> yes. oh, <good> what? <laughs> and it apparently it passes Messi and like the big name global soccer stars. God, it's the biggest. I just don't like. Contract. How is there that much money in baseball? No one. Cares I had the same baseball. question. Yeah. Where does that come from? I don't yeah. know. Factoring in inflation, next year it'll be a billion. Yeah, it'll be a, yeah. Well, there is that. Yeah. And isn't baseball wow. like there's no salary cap? So if the owner of the team is worth you know two billion, he can just say, ah, "I'll just give you seven hundred million." Correct. That's it's a good question. There isn't a salary cap, so that's why teams like the Dodgers and the Yankees win and win and win and win. You know, it's a little more European mm -hmm. soccer style. Yeah, yeah. Like, technically, um, the team could lose money, but if the owner is like, I, "I have enough saved up in my piggy bank, I'll give it to you anyway." I like, think that's true. If there's yeah. not a salary cap, and the other thing that's different is in the NFL, the <laughs> contracts are—they're not in traditional sense a contract because at any point they could release the player and not pay for the remainder unless there's yep. a specific guarantee. In baseball, the contracts are solid. So that's a definite. He will make that money. So, I mean, even with an injury or whatever. So it's a that's a giant pile of money. It's kind of hard to get your head yeah. around. 70 million a year for 10 years. That's a lot. Of, and how old is he now? I think he's played for six seasons so far. 26. So be, yeah, mid 20s. Yeah, that's well, hard I to won't believe. Be around his, I right, won't be around he's 29. Oh, he's 29. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, so he's Still. old enough to retire then, right? <laughs> 29. Wow. Baseball's one of the, you can be older. Yeah, I feel like it's, it's like it's probably the least hard stuff. on you sport. Yeah, yeah probably. Well, definitely. maybe, I don't know. Well, soccer, you do a lot of running pointlessly. Yes. There's so many games pointlessly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say no judgment in that. Like, Very no. brutal sport. Football you know. and basketball are definitely the <laughs> toughest. And for different Football, reasons. Football, hockey, though. Basketball, it's more like you're too freakishly tall and you're going to have there joint that. problems. Yeah, the, the Great Dane issue. <laughs> that kind of plays mm -hmm. into it more than... <laughs>
Unbelievable. They have so many games, though, in baseball. That's true. So, They're playing. Yeah. God, don't they play like five, several hundred per year? They play five. Sixty-two. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, up to five per team because it's best. That's a lot. Three mm-hmm. out of five. It's, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it is a lot. There's no. That's almost every that. day for like a half of the year. That's a really. Yes, it that's is. A big, that's a big number. Yeah, the seasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No doubt about it. I was going to say. Yeah. Anybody in podcasting ever make that bunch of money? Oh, yeah, that's right. Joe Rogan. Never mind. Did he make 700 million? <laughs> no, about 100 million, I think. Well, he's this wow. is cool enough. I mean, he makes a good yeah. amount of money. I think he did. Wasn't that Kostaki was $100 million for 10 years or something? Is that right? I didn't see that. I know it's, it's a Spotify. I mean, he's the. Mm-hmm. He's the He's the fl- the flag bearer for podcasting, yeah. working out. <laughs> he is indeed. Adam Carolla led him right into it too, because Adam Adam was a big shot for at least ten years. I know that he was the highest yeah. rated. I think he's still up there, isn't he? <clears throat> oh yeah, he still does well, no doubt about it. But yeah, hundred million bucks to sit around and talk for an hour and a half—that's pretty good. No, you're selling him short, Tom. It was two hundred million. Oh, it was no, two hundred. I heard it was only a hundred million. Yep. And his episodes are, I think, once a week. And they're from sometimes twice. It's, yeah, it's depending, not. It's like depending on who he gets. Oh well, yeah, the, he's not on a schedule. Yeah, he's like the, he'll he yeah. releases it when he wants. They're however the long he wants are, them yeah, to like be. Sometimes an hour, sometimes three hours. Yeah, it's like yeah, it depends on the guest really, because there he doesn't know. do non-guest. Yeah, like there's always, always a guest. Interviews. If the guest leaves, podcast is over. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. yep. That's just how I, it well, is. he's not that interesting of a guy by himself, is the thing. I gotta <laughs> tell you, I've noticed that he's not that interesting. He knows uh, MMA and taking drugs and fear factor. Well, fear he, becomes, and, he does, and remember fear factor. I will say he does a good job of interviewing. Yeah, and well, that's really? the thing. trying well, to like get a person that has a really strong opinion to see the other side of mm, it, and like, which is interesting. Yeah. Well, he talks to people that everybody else will not talk mm, to. Or that is, is true. Of Elon talking Musk, to. Yeah, yeah. That kind of guy. Mm-hmm. No doubt about that. I just, I had to deal with him twice. You ever had to deal with Joe Rogan Kostaki? I never have met him. No. I, I mean, some of his stand up I think is compelling and good, but I don't really know much about the guy. What'd you think? A little difficult. Let me yeah. just put it that way. He is that, that not doesn't a surprise me. Person. No, you have to leave with a little damn. That's uh-oh. Height is oh. So we get That's away from a little and go. He's a massive pain in the ass. Yeah, there you go. Massive, much there more positive. Go. Yeah, height based word. Yes. <laughs> I remember the first question I ever asked him. He he got so upset because I said I said Joe, where are you from? He goes uh, Boston. I said Are you a Saudi? And he got really pissed off at me for asking him that. It's like, really? Why is that? I mean, Saudis are very, very famous in Boston, right? Yeah, yeah. But he Why felt like he was, like, like you were slotting him in some class warfare below where he wanted to be or cares? something. Yeah. <laughs> Who cares? I don't know. I was going to say something really mean about him, but I decided against it. What unnecessary? <laughs> unnecessary roughness. I knew you were going to say that, Andy. The moment you <laughs> said that? unnecessary, I was like, yes. "What did he say?" He said unnecessary, and then he said unnecessary roughness. Well, which... I got to keep it sports related. <laughs> I knew it was. Gonna... Yeah, you got it. <laughs> right, no, you're you roughing the punter there, Dad. <laughs> no. No, like I said, God, hey, look, God bless him. He brought a lot of attention to, to podcasting. So I got to be, I mean, Adam Carolla was a guy who really brought a lot of attention. His was the yeah. first one I remember getting like really big. Yes. So, and Adam, I've always gotten along with Adam really, really well. Uh, and then Joe came along and, and does what he does. And hey, if you can make $200 million working one, two days a week, I'm happy as hell for you. Good yeah, for you. right. Jimmy yeah. Pardo was a you know. relative pioneer in this oh, yeah. universe as well. He was yeah, the that's first right. comedian kind of doing it regularly and turned it into, you know, money somehow. It's <laughs> a magical you know, way. Somehow. You, watch, you watch TV now and every single person in a news story. And even though she just got out of prison and expected to go back, she has a podcast. <laughs> like everybody's got a podcast now. It's like, my God. I don't know how they service all these podcasts. I, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I, I always said podcasting is like parenting. The the barrier to entry is too low. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. like, I, was. <laughs> uh, I was at Marshall's, <laughs> you know, the discount store. Sure. On the gift table to give people gifts was a podcasting kit. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> see, there you go. Everyone yeah. thinks they can do oh, it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they do. Everybody. <laughs> God, <laughs> bless, God bless no, those kids. Not? It's good to have an outlet for well, it's like your It's not going to hurt anyone yeah, having your exactly. podcast out there. You're no. probably not going to get anywhere, but why not? It's why fun. not? It's a hobby. Oh, yeah. How is it? Any you, else in, you know, Alex just made a good Italy. point too, because it's like you can get out your frustrations without hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I wonder what the ratio. I would love to see has someone done a study the ratio of podcasts that are profitable. It's got to be like oh, a God. tiny percentage. It's, it's got to be one yeah. percent if yes. that. Yeah. Really? <laughs> if that's like yeah, because if two, if you get over, I think it's like five hundred views, you're in the top like five percent of podcasting because there's so oh, many maybe. people yeah because yeah because so many people do a show where it's just them and they get one person that downloads it yes and oh. so if you get over you know like 500 the number's very very if low, you get thirty seven thousand downloads per episode you are in the top one percent thirty seven thousand downloads yeah. that's yeah that's and that's a decent amount of downloads but it's also top one percent right. if you get five thousand oh. you're in the top seven percent right well, i mean i think really? more people do it not to make money yeah but mm -hmm. to just like have something yeah. well it's like youtube to, it's most people yeah. just upload to youtube because you know yeah. it's right. fun or and it'll be a spe super specific niche yeah. like i mm -hmm. have mm -hmm. a child with down syndrome here's my podcast yes. to help other yeah. people it's not going to yeah. necessarily relate to everybody because it's inexpensive really to have one like there's not mm -hmm. much overhead no and it's like no that's very true Oh, hey, if you get people to listen, God bless you. Good for you. I'm, I mean, that's a good thing. I, you guys, you guys should, uh, talked me into doing a podcast uh, 10, 10 years ago. I didn't even want to do it. And you guys said, no, you should get into I, it. I just have a feeling like that's not how it went it at all. It doesn't seem like that's feel, correct. Like that's the opposite. <laughs> you guys were talking to me about podcasting. I didn't, even, I didn't pay any attention to it. Okay. I'm, <laughs> what? I'm, <laughs> What? Dad, we bought a mic and a mixer. Sit the hell down. Yeah. That's we not what I'm saying. You will what do I'm it saying now. I'm saying you guys brought podcasting up to me, and I never even heard of it. Well, well that that's true. It wasn't a true, true yeah. back then. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah, it you was, guys don't have to attack me just because I'm I think father. there. I think when we started, there were maybe <laughs> 20 podcasts on iTunes. It's about well, right. if you if yeah, you think about cool. it, the reason that it's called a podcast is because people would listen to it on their iPod. Pod, yes. Yeah. Yes. How often do people buy iPods anymore? Right. Yeah. yeah. It's been a minute. True. Do they I even mean, make they, iPods I was say, anymore? Do they sell them? They, I'm assuming they do. They probably cause nothing. No idea. They'll make There's iPods. No Let's I'm like, see. I could see buying Fawn nope. an iPod when she's like 10. They discontinued it last okay, year. Huh? Never mind then. So last year. year. Wow. Last year. Yeah. They So they were going for quite a while. The well, iPod. I mean, I feel like Spotify probably ruined the iPhone. No, 100 percent Yeah. Well, you can get it on everyone has a phone now. Every adult yeah. in this country has some sort of smartphone. Gonna say the really... iPhone probably ruined the iPod because you yeah. can store all this stuff. But on I mean, there. for like younger kids, like mm -hmm. a 10-year-old. I wouldn't give my 10-year-old a phone, but I would give my 10-year-old an iPod. Well, but you can get like a used Android phone for like $25 now. So, you know, why not just do that? Because everyone's throwing away any, a phone like, every year. They're worthless. Data on it. Well, iPod like wouldn't things. have data on it either, I don't think. Well, that's what I mean. That's why an iPod would be appealing for a certain age. Yeah, just take the SIM card out and make it an iPod, basically. Yeah. And you just get an yeah. MP3 player. Remember those? Is MP3, that a still a thing? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I'm going to buy Ethan a Zune. <laughs> Zune. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. I forgot about Zunes. Microsoft's answer to the iPod. Oh, my gosh. That's exactly it. So I have to ask Stocky and Tevin, isn't it? Is it normal for a father to bring something up and both his children attack him for no reason? <laughs> is that normal? Is that what you yeah. are? A sensitive hot house nice. flower. Nice. I yeah. said you guys brought up I, I, I podcast. I, mean, I never even heard of it before he comes, you brought it up to me. He comes from a Greek family. There's some dinner table arguments, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I, can't, uh, I can't speak for Kostaki, but I don't get involved in the uh, Bernard family. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorite things man. about this podcast because <laughs> you're enough. such a, you know, you're such a legend in radio. And then on here, you're just like a dad. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> on the lowest rung on the ladder. On top of oh, dad. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's not forget that part. Yeah. I always, I mean, because if, if you think about it, like think of the most powerful people in the world, you know, when they have a six-year-old kid, that kid <laughs> sees Six. them, they're just Doesn't free. Matter. They're just dad, you know. Yeah. It doesn't matter that they're the it president true, yeah. or the CEO of, you know, whatever global yeah. corporation. Yeah. You're just their dad. 
And then when they're 14, your dad is the stupidest Worse person ever walked. Dad, yeah. <laughs> okay. I want to do this before because I know Kostak, you have to leave in the next couple of minutes at the most, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you have two more minutes? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Kevin, I got to bring this up. Who holds the American and probably the world record for being married the most? <laughs> The most often married person oh. in is the it a famous of- person? No. No. no, no, it's not a famous. But can you tell uh, the number of times? Number of times. Not Zsa, Zsa Gabor, huh? Not no, not even. I close. was thinking Larry King or uh, no, nope. not even close. And he looked it up. Actually, Didn't AJ looked it up. Well, I looked it up. We we looked it up like a couple weeks ago. I remember for some. If it's a record, it's got to be something preposterous. It's pretty yes. large. It's got to be like. Forty-three or something. Yeah, it's going to be not like far that. off. Close enough. Thirty-one marriages. <laughs> okay. At that point, you're just trying to find anybody who will marry you because you just want to have a record. Like marriage isn't. Yeah. It's not actually marriage. And it was the shortest marriage, I believe, was nineteen days, and yep. the longest yep. was eleven years. That's yep. a pretty, pretty big spread. Well, eleven years. I mean, how long that person most? really ruined their chance to smash this record? <laughs> like you you could have had but, so many yeah, more marriages. Ten more marriages that? in that amount of time. Kevin <laughs> pointed out that he married a twenty-year-old woman. She was twenty, and he <laughs> was forty-seven. <laughs> but he looked like he was eighty. <laughs> Stocky, I'll throw it up. I think we still have it saved in here by AJ. What? Honestly, what? Okay, yeah, so when, right. when your wife <laughs> number twenty. Look at that! Oh, oh, look at that. oh, he's 80. oh my. Well, I mean, he's a, he's a Baptist seven. minister who was born in 1908. You know, life, life, life was hard at the time. But I mean, what year is when that? you're wife <laughs> number 20, what do you think? What are you thinking? Yeah, 20. I mean, what this are you thinking? That's such a, a good, good track record. 11 after you. Yeah. He probably just paid people to marry and divorce yeah, him. So he have a record. Like yeah, yeah, you when do. When you say the words, everything. till death do you part, do you giggle? <laughs> <And> yeah. <laughs> well, well that's an interest you brought that up. And he died single. Yeah. The forced first four of them all died didn't they no just four of them in total uh, oh, four the first, yeah, yeah I, mean, I think it was like the first three, the first did i think the and... first did let's see number one number eight number 23 <laughs> uh, i think maybe just those three then yeah oh, yeah. Sometimes they died. don't agree to divorce you got to go with the poison mushrooms you know right. <laughs> and out of all of them one was an old no. Oh, no. divorced one was so annulled. technically it doesn't count she must have been super catholic law. or something i don't know what her deal is she has, she has her own wikipedia article yeah i guess when he died he was single so none of them actually made it to death <laughs> yeah. and then his son tried to bury him but because he wasn't next of kin it was some other of uh, one of the wives oh, and so gosh. he like met her for the first time because she was just one of 31 oh, other wives and yeah, so oh, it was a whole thing so wow. don't get too many times kostaki what is it well, do you get is it you get drawn to the cycle of the falling in love and preparing for the I wedding guess. and yeah, probably you well, I have really to imagine love wedding this, cake <laughs> i have to imagine after the 30th time you can't even fool yourself anymore though right? i feel like <laughs> after the you're not like this is gonna be the one sixth time you're yeah. probably like Man, yeah. anywhere north of five you're like yeah. come on what are we doing I re- here i remember as a kid for my uncle he got married divorced and at his second wedding i made the joke like oh i'll see you guys all at the next one Oh, so well, here's it a thing. Oh. It didn't go over that well with the fans. <laughs> well, here's some uh, well, that surprises you. no one, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> I this was 14, cool. thought I was funny. <laughs> this will tell you his mindset at the end. His final marriage was to Linda Taylor, who was the most married woman 23 I was times. Say, this really? is definitely so about he married a record. her yes. as a publicity stunt. Yes. And they never actually lived together. They got married and they just exactly. lived out their days alone. That's what I'm saying. This isn't about marriage. This is about no. a record. Yeah, exactly. 31 and 23. So he was a messed mm-hmm. up fella. Yeah. What a weird record to go for. I have to yeah, most, It's a very expensive record to go for. This I've might been, have been. I've been married oh, once and go. it was a lot. <laughs> no, no, was it, once was enough. Yeah, once I'm I'm done. <laughs> uh, I can understand that. Alex had to get going, but I will tell you. Going to weddings in North Minneapolis, most of them were at Howie's up on the second floor, which is on West Broadway and Penn Avenue. And I cannot remember one wedding. And I went to probably 50 of them there because that's where everybody went for their reception. I do not remember one wedding where there wasn't a fist fight. 
Oh, what? <laughs> what? Wow. Every wedding, there was a fist fight, sometimes between the father of the bride and the groom. Oh, oh, goodness. <laughs> a fist fight at the wedding. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so one day, stay, you're on your good behavior. Right. Not happening. I guess it's right. the, the combination of mixing families and drinks. Oh, you the know. alcohol was a huge part of it. Yeah. No question right. about it. Kostaki, I appreciate your extra time, but I wanted to get you involved in that whole uh Absolutely. One marriages thing, because I know one was enough for you. Oh, one's plenty. One's too much. <laughs> one's plenty. <laughs> All right. We'll talk to you next week. See you guys. Thanks, See you. Pal. Saki Economopolis, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I don't know. It's, I, you know, when you first brought that up this morning, Tevin, mm -hmm. I couldn't believe that someone had been married. Third, I would have guessed like eight times, boy, that's a lot of times to be married. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once you for sure double digits is like once you get to 10, well, something yeah. like that is so extreme. But to go 31, I think, yeah, Alex is right when she says at that point, it's not about the marriage. It's just about no. how many of these can I rack up? Mm -hmm. But again, that woman's 20 years old and she married a guy who was 47, but looked like he was 80. Yeah. I mean, he looked a lot older than 47 in that picture, don't you think? Oh, yeah. And I I wonder what he did for a living. Like, was he rich? He was a, minister. He was a Baptist minister, oh, right. so he couldn't have been that rich. No. Nope. Because, yeah, like, it, it would make sense if, like, okay, he's, you know, unbelievably wealthy, and this is just his thing. He's like, oh, you want to date? Well, actually, I marry all the girls I date, and don't worry, we'll mm -hmm. just get a divorce. <laughs> I, I don't know. Something not right with that guy. Yeah, I. So, how do these women keep falling for this guy? Oh, you've been married twenty nine other times. Okay, well, no problem. Well, none of the women he married attended his funeral. Really? Yeah, so, that tells you something. Yeah, I. None of these were real marriages. Although he did have nineteen children, so he had nineteen children. That's right. So, I mean, yeah, about yeah, they uh, they consummated about half of them at least. So there you go. I guess. I don't know. It's oh, I got to click on this. It, it just just the headline is enough for me. But why you would do this, I will never understand. Okay, you guys like garlic shrimp? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think it's a okay. mild garlic though. It can't be way over the top, right? Yeah, nothing wrong with a little garlic shrimp. Mm -hmm. Garlic shrimp. Okay, this man made a garlic shrimp dish on an airplane. Uh, in the toilet. Ooh, in ooh. the toilet or like in the room that the toilet is in? Well, I'm going to find That's a very out. important distinction. Yeah, <laughs> Yes, it is. It's very important. Uh, I mean, I still wouldn't make shrimp in a bathroom, but no. you know. No. How would you feel about eating garlic shrimp? How about having it on a plane? Or what about having it on a plane after it was made in the plane's bathroom? Okay, bathroom. Good. There's a guy on TikTok who makes videos where he cooks elaborate things in hotel bathrooms, but he had just had a, quote, terrible idea. He posted a video where he makes garlic shrimp inside the lavatory of a commercial airplane. He said that we, he was lucky to get past security because the components to building the heat element uh, might look like a bomb. I suppose that's true. There's no heat sure. element in a bathroom. No, he no. would have had to construct it himself. It was probably just a metal plate, a uh, resistive coil, and a battery, if I had to guess, or a uh, plug-in. They, do they have plug-ins in airplane bathrooms? I don't think. So. I don't. Know. I don't. So I don't see why they would. It probably wouldn't be a great idea. Well, here you go. And he used six volt batteries wired to an immersion go. beverage heater, and it got mm -hmm. hot enough that the raw shrimp only needed a few minutes. He added instant mash to the shrimp water in the sink for extra flavor and topped it off with garlic. So he actually made it in the sink. It's still gross. Yeah, because everybody's filthy hands yeah. have been in there. Yeah. I wouldn't make food in my sink. No. No, hell no. Once everything was made, he tossed it into a complimentary barf bag, walked back to his seat to enjoy his meal. He ate it? He ate it. This is kind of a be, being a trend. There was a kid that in a college dorm made an entire Thanksgiving dinner using essentially oh. like in, uh, something similar to what this guy did in like an easy bake oven. So people yeah, are doing these like trying to just get clicks where yeah, I look at what I can make with a 
couple batteries. Well, but sure, but then to eat it after. Yeah, I'm not eating that. that kind of no, I mean, unless he doused yeah. the entire sink in rubbing alcohol first or something. Even yeah. then, though, no. no. Well, because there was so back in the day when MythBusters was a thing. Oh yeah, they yeah. did a why you shouldn't leave your toothbrush in the bathroom because like when you flush the toilet, the particles yep. spray yep. everywhere. And so just that thought alone, mm -hmm. I'm not eating that shrimp. It's like um, Seinfeld when Kramer used to, uh, he would prepare his vegetables in the shower. Because he was like, well, there's running water already. I can clean them in the shower, chop them up. I'm taking a shower, get two things at once. And all his friends were not too happy to learn this. No. So what, what did he run this by me again? What did he do? Uh, this is on Seinfeld. Kramer, he prepared his vegetables in the shower. <laughs> But how did you heat them? Oh, I suppose it's hot water. You prep them, but you then you bring them out to cook them after you're done taking a shower. Right. So he's just like wash, essentially washing and shopping, and, basically. Yeah, peeled them. And, mm -hmm. You know, he was a pretty good character on that show. He was. He was probably the best character on the show. And the least uh, good character on the show was Seinfeld himself. Uh, probably, yes. Yeah. Everybody else on the show was really good. He was mediocre at best. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, that guy's a billionaire. And talent isn't something I think of when I think of giant Jerry Seinfeld. No, not at least not when it comes to the show. I saw no. him years and years ago do stand up. He was in town at, I believe, the State Theater, and it was probably top five stand up performance I've ever oh, seen. That's good. Well, that's good to hear. See, I didn't, I've never seen him live, so yeah. I just judge by he's got a hell of an attitude. That's the one thing about him that bothers me. He's always got this really negative stuff mm -hmm. to say about other people. Well, did you ever watch the uh, the show? It's essentially it was like a documentary about him called Comedian. No, should I? Uh, it's it's older. It's interesting, but yeah, he comes off as a guy that recognizes his own brilliance and isn't scared yeah. to tell everybody else about it. Oh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. He loves to tell other people how smart he is. Yeah. Whereas most of the comedy on that show came from Larry David, didn't it? Didn't he write most of the funny stuff? Well, that's well, that's the thing about all sitcoms is it's technically the writers who are the funny right. ones. Right. Yeah, you have a room full of people mm -hmm. that are bringing you, you know, hundreds of bits, and you're yep. like, ah, let me just take the funniest ones. And he might adapt it a little bit to put his own spin on it, but yeah, it's all stuff he's give, been given for the most part. I would assume. Yeah, you know, I, I don't dislike Jerry Seinfeld. I just don't think he's that funny. No, yeah, but you said his special was great. His special is great. But if you were to put me in a room and put Seinfeld on TV, I can't change the channel fast enough. But I yeah, agree. I saw him do stand up. I got free tickets, which probably made it seem a little bit funnier to me. But yeah, he was he was worth the price of a free ticket. Do you guys remember who the funniest comedian was you ever saw live? Mm. Hmm. That's a good question. Ooh. I'm going to say Orny yeah. Adams. Oh, yeah. Orny, I loved Orny. Whatever happened? Where'd Orny go? I don't know, but he is like the most manic person to watch do comedy on stage. And oh, he, yeah. had a, he had a bit about a water bottle. Like he's like, the, have you ever seen the label on water bottles? He's like, there's all this stuff listed. And he's like, it's just water. <laughs> I know. He was like, he said, like, he <laughs> finishes it with, like, uh, you know, there's an expiration date on my water. And he was like, you know how you know if the water goes bad? If it all evaporated out of a bottle, if you open it and it's empty, it went bad. Like he just makes anything funny that yeah he touches. So I love that. Oh, he I will never I can't remember how many years, but he was at uh, the House of Comedy, and I think it was when you were there, if I remember correctly, maybe not. But I remember he came and saw me. We he and I went and had lunch the next day after his first night. Mm -hmm. he said Tom, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, What do you mean? Apparently, during his show on Friday night, somebody jumped off the parking ramp and killed them. Oh, yeah. I was there. Yeah. I was oh, yeah. there. You were there. Yeah. I thought so. So in I the, thought that was right. In the winter at the Mall of America, up on the like Jeez. whatever top of the parking garage, like every year, multiple like dozens and dozens of people try to commit suicide, especially during the holidays. Really? Like jumping off, yeah. They, uh, I remember we had the security guards would meet in the house comedy because it was the big enough space to like have their meeting. And they're mm -hmm. doing, they gave this guy an award and they're like, This guy saved the most people's lives this year. 
And I'm thinking, okay, three people, maybe four, 24 people. Mm -hmm. He talked off the ledge of jumping. And so that's just when he's working. So I could only imagine how many, you know, hundreds of people probably venture out to the mall. Like if you try to go up there and have a smoke, somebody within, you know, two minutes is like, hey, what are you doing up here? You got to get out of here. So yeah, they, they take it very seriously. But yeah, somebody jumped. And I remember it was the one I found was March 7th, 2013. Does that sound right? That could be. Uh, yeah, that definitely could be. It was right around there. But yeah, he jumped yep. in. I remember walking out of the uh, parking garage. And yeah, there were paramedics, and the guy was unfortunately <laughs> all over the place mm-hmm. down there. Orny did not take that too well. <laughs> no, <laughs> Orny, <laughs> Orny was the type of guy where if the the if it was a little too warm in the comedy club, it was like the earth, the sky was falling. Not in like oh, a yes. mean way. Just he's just a very dramatic person. I haven't heard his name in a long time, and he's still in comedy. I hope because he was very funny. God, I would hope so. He, I have no he, idea. he was always one of my favorite. Ben Glebe was another one that Ben Glebe's another up. great guy. You're right. Is he still doing the game shows and all that stuff? Uh, I believe he's still doing the game show. Um, but yeah, ben, ben, ben Glebe win Ben Glebe's money or whatever it was called. That was yeah. Ben Stein. Oh, no, ben, did, uh, yeah. ben Glebe did Idiot Test. Was Idiot Test. Test. Yeah, 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 I remember that. There you go. And then he was going to run for president, which was really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got a little weird. He was like, yeah, I'm going to run for president. I was like, oh, that's a funny joke. And he was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm really going to yeah, run for president. I remember. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, he got weird. You know, I was just looking at my phone yesterday, and it's kind of sad because I still have the phone numbers of a lot of people. You know, mm-hmm. doing that have done comedy in the. I mean, I look at my phone, and it's the sad part of it is some of them are dead, but I can't take their number off my phone. Yeah. I have a hard time doing that when somebody dies. I have a hard time taking their money, uh, their 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 name and number off my phone. Mm-hmm. I have tons of that on my phone. Yeah, people I really really talk to again, or people who are dead. Yeah. Yep. Or if like I'll see their name come across social media is like hey reconnect with so and so and i'll be like yeah hey, I'm dead and i just I'm like i can't unfriend you because mm-hmm. it feels weird to... See, here's andy fisher my best friend as a kid his n- name and number is still on my phone i've still got him on my phone do you really you do yeah. as well mm-hmm. well it's ben glebe i still got his number but he's alive still right yeah he's, he's alive <laughs> glad to hear as far that as i know i do i have tons of names of comedian bobby slayton is on my phone is he still doing Skecher commercials? Skecher? The Skecher shoe commercials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That I did Bobby not Skecher. Oh, yeah. That's him. You can tell because he talks like this. He's, he's one of these guys that pick up your sketches. He's one of those guys. But yep. yeah, I, I have a hard time, especially if I was close to someone. And these guys I'm talking about now were not. Bobby Slayton's mm-hmm. alive and well, and so is Ben Glee. But I, I just can't. You know, Louis Anderson's number is still on my phone. It's just the way it is, you know. Greg Gutfeld, his number is still on my phone. Uh, no, I'm thinking of a different guy. It's not Greg Gutfeld. He's a guy on Fox, right? Yeah, the the five or about? whatever. I think that's him, right? No, no, he's on Gutfeld. Who's the five guy? Or is that also Gutfeld? Yeah, it's Gutfeld too, yeah. He's both? Yes, indeed. Okay. All right, you want to wrap it up? Any Any closing arguments? Hmm. Closing. Arguments. Where did mom go? Yeah, I don't know. She does that to me all the time. She's going. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go in the other room. I'm like, well, wait a minute. We're yeah, doing a show here. We've got a little bit more show yeah. left well, here. Jude looks extremely sad behind you. Oh, is he? Yeah, mom me? must have. She must have like gone somewhere or something. Oh yeah, he's he's just, just the door. Just staring at the door. You can see Santa through the door though, so that's nice. Again, very festive. Very festive. Catherine's got it all going. All right, well, we shall talk to you guys tomorrow. Talking.